which return on investment will come back and um, you know give a visibility to the customer as i said earlier to inspire the customer to go for the next stage which is in migration readiness and planning where we get into more detailed uh, discussion with the customer to actually create a realistic business plan so migration readiness assessment um, it is actually built on the cloud adoption framework of aws and um, the cloud adoption framework is a mechanism established by aws's proserve team and um, it actually follows a model of evaluating the customer's readiness to adapt cloud on basis of six pillars um, basically from a business capability point of view it looks at business value realization um, roles and readiness of people skill set like do they have people who are already knowing cloud certified on cloud or some kind of a devops skill set or not uh, taking a look at whether the business has a you know a mindset to get into cloud or is there a business driver uh, for them to adopt cloud computing or not governance um, model wise are they compatible with something like a cloud computing architecture um, platform security and operations from a technical point of view so what kind of applications are they having what kind of infrastructure are they having um, this is not only to understand just the readiness also to identify any areas where we might have roadblocks uh, we might have um, you know more work to do when we actually take on the migration so this is where we have to also understand the gaps um, which may exist in the you know customer environment and uh, we have to accordingly come up with a mitigation strategy and uh, we also would be interacting with the customer team um, in much more um, depth and um, you know we will work, be working with them much more closely so this will build up the initial bond between the uh, you know partner team and the customer team uh, to basically understand the dynamics of the company uh, if any you know political scenarios we have to keep in mind all of that uh, we get to understand by doing a migration readiness assessment by following the cloud adoption framework um, you know there is a 60 70 question survey uh, which can be presented to the customer teams and uh, you know people from different different side of the business can come over so for example people from the um, you know cxo level business level they can come over and answer the business questions um, you know security team can come over and answer the security related questions so total overall 60 to 70 questions will be there and um, that has to be asked to the customer and they have to answer and accordingly you will be rating them now to do this you might you know have your own mechanism also to do something like this you can have your own questionnaire which you feel would be doing um, you know migration readiness assessment however we also have our own tool set wherein you have ready-made questions and uh, which you can position in front of the customer and get a sense of um, you know their environment and get feedback from them on various pointers now uh, these uh, whether you use these tools or whether you use your own um, excel sheet or something uh, you can basically conduct this as a one day workshop our suggestion is that you do it as a one day full workshop and uh, which you break down in terms of interviews with these stakeholders so you have to obviously before going there um, you know inform aws team and um, have to create customer account into the aws sfdc our salesforce so that you can run this tool because these tools would require you to uh, populate the customer details and um, once you have done that bit of preparation and readiness obviously you have to also go through a bit of a training uh, the trainings are available uh, both in form for self-paced trainings as well as workshops so uh, you have to go through these trainings and once you're ready and you're prepared to do this on your own and you have added the customer details into sfdc then you can visit the customer uh, have this wonder workshop uh, in terms of interviews where do you position the service with them 
and get their answers. Now, if you have to do something like this, then how do you go about it uh, is something that we will also take a look at. Uh, but one thing that I keep on uh, hearing from our partners and specifically in India is that, um, you know, do we actually have to um, get into a MRA, uh, which is a very high level um, discussion, or should we directly jump into asking the customer about a detailed inventory of their environments and uh, doing a, a detailed business case for them? So what we have observed that obviously business case has an uh, impact on the overall experience of the migration, but you know there are actually three levers uh, that actually accelerate the migration. So first of all, what you need to understand is migration would cause a spike in the cost uh, of the customer, uh, in the expense of the customer in terms of uh, their daily running of the services. So if you look at this particular diagram right now, what you see here, this blue line is actually customers current expense and how it will continue if the customer doesn't do anything like there is no going into cloud or anything um, transformation that they're doing they just continue with the current environment then this is how the blue line looks like but if they actually get into cloud or you know they decide to go for migrating into cloud so initially there'll be a spike in their expenses and this is unavoidable right uh, we all understand that because this spike is due to the work that we'll put in terms of the migration preparation uh, planning phase uh, understanding their environment doing application uh, designs moving them into cloud utilizing cloud resources uh, setting up the initial infrastructure all of that will obviously be a sudden extra cost that will come to the customer and uh, it will initially look a lot like that it's a huge amount of extra cost for coming few let's say one year or more than that now if that becomes a concern with the customer then what we have to showcase to the customer is also the fact that overall tco of the customer although right now uh, it might spike for a year or so till the migration gets complete and till we get into optimization phase once the optimization actually happens then it will be in a much better shape and you can see this you know curve um, of you know aws cost actually spiking up in the beginning and uh, then having a plateau and then finally going down as we increase optimization on the cloud side and at one point of time it will obviously go below their current tco and how it would have been otherwise if they have not migrated to cloud and with further optimization we can get it down to quite a beneficial return on investment however uh, that obviously can be further accelerated if you do a mra it is obviously even um, you know better to have a you know great business case to support the mra and to have a very structured wave based approach to migration all of which we will be discussing in the coming slides however mra plays a big role into bringing that migration bubble down um, for a significant amount if you have done a proper mra and uh, that is purely because that mra is your planning phase mra is where you get to actually know the all the details about the customer you get to know what all pitfalls are there uh, you know if there is a particular person who is going to be a naysayer in your migration uh, progress if you if you have to specifically put consideration to that person um, if you have to you know work on a particular technical area like maybe they're having a certain old generation unix platform which has to be taken up in a different kind of a migration approach so all of these things you get to know in the very beginning if you do the mra so without customer getting into any significant investment you are going to be able to plan it properly for the customer and that actually 
experience for the customer and because you have done the mra beforehand when you get into the actual planning phase then you are much more ready and aware about the areas where you need to focus because obviously the whole uh, process of mra mrp and uh, starting the migration is not going to be very long time so you'll probably be using let's say uh, six eight weeks of time maximum uh, to get to that point or ideally that is what you should do so if you are if you are approaching that way then mra helps you a lot uh, into focusing your efforts during the actual planning phase and uh, therefore we obviously suggest that you should do the mra and this has been validated several times by our um, you know customers and um, you know they have said that you know with mra um, you know the amount of time required can be significantly reduced down the return on investment uh, becomes much higher if a proper mra has been done so that's why we talk about doing a mra it helps us uh, to achieve with a consensus on the current state so that you know let's say uh, when you start the actual migration uh, customer has already agreed with you about the current state of their environment right um, there is no surprises about it and um, you also get to understand um, the areas where they might actually have some capability in house so that you understand that um, you know who all uh, will be able to um, manage the cloud environment or who all are your sponsors um, you know if a particular development team is very interested into uh, using cloud you know you should listen to them and understand what is their exact business case or use cases so that you can identify those areas and strengthen that in your business case um we obviously would be able to build trust with the customer because you know once they have agreed with us that we understand their current environment then it builds a certain amount of trust that we know about their environment and accordingly we are designing the solution uh, as i said it helps us to map the people and um, understand who to work with and um, how to manage uh, various expectations uh, within the customer group all of this results into having lot fewer roadblocks during the actual migration and um, this you know improves the process going forward in order to understand mra we have to have a clear idea about what is in scope for mra and what is out of scope for mra Uh, so that there is no confusion because uh, from a name perspective migration readiness assessment and migration readiness and planning uh, may seem a bit similar but migration readiness assessment is a very high level wonder workshop in which you get to understand about the customer and uh, there are few specific areas that we focus into one of that is obviously the cloud adoption framework <laughs> where we talk about business governance operation uh, people platform and security these six pillars and we understand customers uh, abilities customers gaps in these areas um, the gap analysis is a very important part which is in scope for mra and uh, this is where you are interacting with the customer for the first time the customers various team members for the first time and you are trying to understand uh, where they might have some problems or for example let's say one of the very important thing about a migration is that <clears throat> the security team has to be on board with you for example let's say uh, when you even start the basic part of the migration uh, with just analyzing their environments you might need to put some agents on their servers to do some scanning and discovery of their applications and servers uh, even that would require a buy in from the security team they have to be prepared for something like this and they have to have uh, their standard procedures in place to handle such kind of a uh, change in the environment now if they are not onboarded if they do not have any idea about such kind of requirements or such kind of um, you know demands for getting into a cloud transformation deal then that's a red flag for you so we use this red green amber grading method <coughs> to identify the areas where we need to put more focus on and uh, probably the areas where we might have you know 
possible areas um, where you know either the team members are not ready for cloud environment adoption <clears throat> or maybe uh, we need to work more on the governance side with them um, you know maybe uh, it is also about sometimes you know uh, that cloud adoption is seen uh, as a as a way of uh, impact on the uh, workforce or the headcounts and uh, <clears throat> if that becomes the case um, then that also might create some hostility sometimes uh, we need to be aware of all of that and um, you know the cloud adoption framework the six pillars they help us in identifying all those areas through various survey questions and by the report that gets generated at the end we will obviously be focusing into building a high level business case that as i said inspires the customer for getting into the mrp phase because migration readiness is planning is where you actually get into the details where it actually becomes more uh, you know strong case where the customer is actually going to get into migration so mrp is the phase that you actually want to get into for that mrd is a short way to convince a customer build trust with the customer and also for us to understand the customer environment so that we can create a good enough business case for the mrp phase um, we will have to do documentation of the gaps risks and dependencies that we find out and um, we have to have a understanding of how they can impact our project timeline so if you get into actual migration where all these dependencies will cause a problem for us so these dependencies should be identified and at a high level you should know that because of this dependency so and so process in our migration might get impacted what is not part of scope is that you are not expected to work on a high level and detailed architecture design for migrating to aws environment so there is uh, no need for you to get into a application architecture design session with the let's say developers to really come out with a solution you can get into a discussion to understand their approach which obviously is one part of our um, readiness assessment to understand you know who all are our sponsors who all have the interest and um, you know who what kind of platform are they trying to build so from that perspective it will help but there is no need for you to come up with a solution design at this stage right um, you will have a very high level understanding of what their uh, requirements are but the architecture design and all is not expected at this stage detailed application portfolio discovery and analysis for fitment um, you know feasibility kind of things are also not expected at this stage because at this stage we are considering where the customer has not yet given that kind of access to you for going ahead and implementing an application portfolio discovery system and gather their uh, you know server infrastructure information or network infrastructure information so that we are not going to consider at this point uh, it is also not about you doing a proof of concept or doing a short migration for them to show them that migration can happen this is just a workshop where you go and meet with the stakeholders so that you can identify the right people to work with and so that you can identify all the gaps and risks and dependencies directional or detailed tcu analysis is not required although as part of the assessment phase we will end it up with a directional business case but not as part of the mra so assessment phase by itself has two parts one is the mra which is the one day workshop that we are talking about and then obviously you have to also come back to them with a tcu analysis and a uh, you know uh, sort of a directional business case at a high level which will inspire them to get into the mrp phase um, this is again um, you know migration planning is the next step so nothing that is gets covered in the migration planning is expected to be part of the mra so this should 
give you a very good clarity about what is exactly that we are expecting in part of MRA. Now, remember um, that uh, in the beginning of this discussion, I set the context that um, we are going to discuss the processes in the form of what is the best practice from the AWS side and what is expected of a partner when they come and apply for a migration competency. Now, if you come and apply for a migration competency, uh, we expect that in every deal that you submit as a case study to us for the evaluation, you are doing MRA with them. Now, because that, as we showed in the previous graph, has a significant impact on the return on investment, on the realization of benefits for cloud adoption. So we expect that to be a crucial part of your project work right so that is an expectation which we have about the mra phase and you are expected to do mra and then mrp now in some cases um, you know it might be that the customer is already made up their mind and uh, they actually already have the understanding that um, you know they would like to get into cloud so they might just ask you to come over and get into the discovery phase or get into a detailed business case with them now then in those cases you might execute these kind of assessment in a combined manner but make sure that you at least cover these um, you know overall six pillars of business governance operation people platform and security in terms of the cloud adoption framework to know where the customer stands even though the customer is very interested still it might not be something that their entire company is uh, ready for or you know you have to know still the pockets of failures that might happen so even if it feels um, you know that the customer is already ready and the high level business case is not required still you have to go for the mra and which is why we are saying that in the assess phase you can go for a high level business case or may not go for high level business case but mra is a independent process by itself right which you should anyway do uh, you may not have a uh, uh, business case prepared after that and you get into the direct discovery and all the other mrp phases and then just submit one final um, you know business case uh, which is in depth in detail business case so that is all fine but you should at least do the mra as a process no need for a, a high level business case but still to the mra Okay, I hope that makes uh, it clear for uh, when you should do MRA and uh, what is exactly that we are expecting as part of MRA. So, who are going to be the recommended attendees? Um, so, you can see the list over here. So, basically, lead of the network team, lead of the security team, application development leader, infrastructure operations leader, uh, all these people, including the finance, um, who is going to finally uh, give a go ahead on your business case. Um, you know, any escalation incident manager who is there, who is going to run the operations afterwards. So, all these people are going to be required. We would require the presence of the C-level executives. Uh, we would need to take the business context from the CEO, CIO. Um, we we don't need them to be continued uh, continuously be there. But for the entire workshop, we need to have um, the these set of people in the room so that the parts of the MRA uh, which are relevant to them, they can answer those particular sections. So this is a sort of uh, a high level view or an example agenda for a MRA workshop that you want to arrange. Um, think about like you start off with the introductions and um, then we discuss at the CXO level uh, with the CXO level people about uh, what is the you know customer business and technology goals and objectives. Um, that input we capture at that point of time itself. And then we give the customer itself overview of the program that we have brought in in terms of um, to accelerate their migration to the cloud and um, that is to you know entice them to have a continued discussion with us um, to show that you know we are coming here with a ready process and we are following a methodology and then we get into the actual readiness assessment wherein we run the survey 
of about 70 questions and um, we capture the information as it comes along and after that uh, we summarize our feedback we summarize uh, the um, entire survey outcome and um, you know basically prepare a report of sorts at the end of the day um, which obviously can then be presented after the day or so you can you know come over to the customer uh, present in the next day or maybe maybe do it in that day itself depending on how the mra has gone for you right but this is how a typical mra workshop should look like um, it should be a one day activity that we make the customer to agree to and as you can understand uh, for doing this the customer needs to make people available so all the people that we saw in the previous slide they need to be made available for joining us into this one day workshop um, to have long discussion with us throughout the day and answer all our questions right so once only you have that confirmation from the customer then this workshop becomes successful right so we need to make sure that our preparatory work is done properly um, you should also have preparations done with the aws team so that you have got the customer details updated as a deal in our sfdc and accordingly then you will be able to use the tools that you can use for capturing the information submitted by the customer now when i'm talking about the tools um, there are mainly two tools that are available here uh, one is the cloud admission readiness assessment um, tool which is the cart tool um, that is a high level short survey uh, it does not have as many questions as the full-fledged MRA has. And uh, the CAR tool is, um, you know, something that is a easy survey of about 16, 20 kind of um, questions. Again, following the same cloud adoption framework pillars. So it, it still asks you questions on business, people, process, platform, operations, and security. However, it has less number of questions. This is typically suitable when uh, you did not get the full time uh, from the whole customer team. And um, you know you are not going to get that much of time for some reason uh, to conduct a whole day workshop. So you have limited amount of time. You want to get this uh, information captured somehow. So in that case, you follow the car tool and you get at least some amount of information captured some direction in terms of their readiness for adapting cloud however if you are actually able to get the full-fledged workshop then you should ignore the card tool and you should focus into the mra tool that we have which is gonna have the whole 60 70 questions that we are talking about so this you know screenshot in the back is actually the full-fledged MRA uh, tool in which you have all the questions that are asked to the customer and you can capture the answers there itself and based on that you know you also do the scoring in that uh, particular tool and finally generate a report from the tool both in form of PDF and form of PPT and that PPT then can be your report which you can play back to the customer at the end of the day all right now these are some of the example questions just to give you a flavor of what is there in terms of the mra questions right so um for example and it depends on you know what kind of people are answering your questions so for example um what kind of application project management do they follow right is it is it agile is it scrum or are they still following some waterfall model right uh, any particular detailed cloud migration plan is there or not um, if they have any cmdb if they have any um, asset inventory management system we need to be aware of that and and you know what is the status of it sometimes customers tend to have a cmdb implemented but seldom they actually you know do a discovery implementation that captures the data and keeps the same to be updated so we need to understand those uh, aspects that you know it might be that they have a cmdb but do they have the data continuously updated when was the last time this data was updated and you know uh, where is this information stored right is it something that uh, we can fetch as a data uh, does it give us output export file 
or not um what kind of uh, level of devops adoption are they having right so these are questions that you can ask to the enterprise architect um, who can tell you that are they following any kind of uh, ci cd platform are the builds automated um, what kind of chain management process are they following configuration management process are they following like let's say if they have a traditional cmdb and they're following um, a reactive configuration management so then they are making the changes and then coming back and changing the updates into the uh, cmdb platform uh, which sometimes uh, becomes a bit difficult to implement in case of cloud environments instead of that if you have a devops kind of a configuration management which is proactive configuration management then it is more ready for cloud computing environments so those are the kind of questions that you ask and capture the information into the tool and then from the tool you can generate the report you can have the scoring and um, you finally can have a high level business case created plus have the customer um, you know understanding that what all uh, pitfalls are there to work in this kind of environment right so what happens afterwards is that you get this kind of a output report based on the kind of answers and the ratings and um, based on that then you get a summary view and that summary view tells you certain positive things about the customer environment which you may not have expected and some uh, areas of concern right so for example if you look at this particular report there's an example report and it shows you that the customer actually has people who are skilled on um, you know or at least have the understanding of this kind of migration project uh, however they do have issues around backup patching uh, dr bcp you can see all these points are on the uh, red and they have 1.0 1.5 kind of a rating right um, the sla olas are not well defined so that might be extra uh, part that we have to focus on to while building our sow and um, you know what kind of security mechanism do they have are the uh, people in the security team um, well versed with the kind of changes that will come for migration to the cloud right so that kind of a understanding it generates so there are few things that you should keep in mind while getting into a arrangement like this for doing a mra so you should obviously include the customer security team from the beginning to the end as i explained earlier uh, security is one aspect which can be the bottleneck for you so when you get into the actual migration or the other phases of the migration um, security team can cause issues because they're not ready for it they might not be ready for it in terms of uh, they're not able to cope up with the changes or they didn't expect this much of changes or maybe simply um, they are um, not you know skilled enough to understand how to um, handle the security if such changes are being made to the environment right so you have to convince them continuously so if you start that in the beginning itself then going forward uh, they will be already convinced if you don't start in the beginning then you know going forward they will be your bottleneck uh, also migration readiness assessment can be done through a tool is just a survey so although it may feel like that you can send one person to do the survey with the customer uh, you should not do that one person should build the conversation with the customer teams um, you know understand the various aspects of uh, the customer environment while conversing with them instead of losing focus by taking notes right uh, you should have a dedicated person separately who will keep on taking the notes and uh, then one person to lead the conversation right uh, the observations that you come out with at the end should be at exact summary level and um, typically customer uh, should not have any particular action as the outcome of it right uh, one more important thing is that um, don't lose focus on our objective our main objective is to um, progress this towards a uh, mrp followed by a proper migration execution where we actually do the migration uh, so 
keep the discussion alive keep the discussion positive and um, do a follow up meeting with the customer uh, schedule it immediately on the workshop day itself uh, that when the next meeting will happen and how uh, we will be uh, reviewing all this um, you know outcomes and how we strategize going forward right so uh, prepare a plan of actions uh, prepare a sort of a sort of blue high level a sort of blue uh, for um, you know the mobilization phase or the migration phase mobilization phase means basically how you would take this to the next step and uh, do deeper discovery um, you know do planning of moving my you know moving the applications so come up with that and also come up with how you would do a best practices uh, based approach of actually migrating their workloads for example wave based uh, approach or sprint based approach to uh, do their migrations so come up with that in the next review meeting to keep the conversation going so that uh, you as i said can inspire the customer to go for the mrp phase <laughs> so uh, migration readiness assessment uh, can be done from the uh, mra tool which is part of the accelerate so if you have apn partner central account you can actually um, go there and uh, log in into the accelerate.amazonaws.com and from there you get access to these tools so i'll quickly try to show you as well uh, let me see all right so i hope you are able to see the browser screen so this is the accelerate.amazonaws.com and here you can see that uh, we have the readiness assessment tool um, which you can launch from here there is also portfolio assessment uh, which i'll discuss later on um, you know which is helpful in doing the mrp phase and then there is a pattern library which is helpful in doing the execute phase or the migration and modernize phase so we'll come to those later on but the readiness assessment tool you can launch it directly from your accelerate account and uh, also uh, you have the cart tool let me just check if i can show that up so cloud readiness dot amazon aws dot com um, slash card so you can directly go to that and uh, the assessment from there and it will basically show you all the questionnaire right so as i said it's a very short um i said it's just 16 questions actually so not the detailed questionnaire that mra has but this gives you a feeling of uh, you know how the cloud adoption framework works how these uh, you know questions for each pillar is and you can do this as a practice for you also uh, as i said if you don't get a full time to do the full workshop with them uh, at least this much information you try to capture right i also try to see if i can launch this one So this is the MRA tool actually, and uh, here actually you can go and create your own assessment. I'm not going into the details of these because on Monday we actually have a detailed session on the tools, and um, there I'll be covering uh, these things in much more detail. All right. So that's essentially the part of the MRA. A uh, as part of the access, right? So as I said, the overall migration process has three phases: access, mobilize, and then migrate and modernize. Uh, sorry, access, mobilize, migrate and modernize. So access is about um, you know assessing the customer environment uh, at a initial high level. Mobilize is doing the analysis in a much more deep level to create a final SOW that customer can sign off as a migration project. And uh, then the migration and modernize is the execution phase where you actually do the migration. So as part of the assess phase, um, you know, we have already talked 
about the migration readiness as an assessment, um, you know, as a process and what all things are involved in that. Um, apart from that, in the assess process itself, we have the rapid discovery and directional business case. Now, rapid discovery is a sort of a technical or semi-technical discovery that we are talking about in terms of, you know, whether you can run a tool or whether you capture the information from something they already have. And then on basis of that information, you have adequate amount of information to build a business case. Again, as I told you, uh, there might be situations where you may not need to submit a high level business case because the customer is already convinced. And uh, therefore you might feel like that you can start the MRP phase and uh, get to a full-fledged detailed migration business case directly. There is no need to do a high-level discovery. I mean, if the customer is already allowing you to get into that environment and install a discovery tool and uh, run a deep discovery, then why would you do a high-level thing, right? So that's absolutely okay, as long as you also do the MRA. MRA and um, rapid discovery and business case, direction business case, are not actually related. MRA is for you to initially get an understanding of all the customer environment, the challenges that there can be, right? And that is absolutely crucial. Without that information, you should not jump into implementing a discovery tool, um, you know, landing zone and all that. For example, let's say you jump into discovery directly and you have not done the MRA. You would not know what uh, challenges the security team will pose for you, right? Whether they will allow you to run the discovery tool properly or not. So you, you have to know those to create a good expectation. Otherwise, what will happen is you will get into the process and um, you might then have to escalate it to the management about you know the security team and not allowing you to do stuff or security team might allow you know basically escalate it. And um, you know, it will not be a good experience, right? So you should you know, do this in a more professional way, wherein you have already discovered the areas of challenge, you have created a plan for it, and then you are getting into, right? Um, however, if you do get the chance to actually get into the, um, you know, initial directional business case, if that is a scenario where the customer is still not convinced, and it is a business case, which is going to make you convinced about the you know, which is going to make the customer convinced about getting into more invested into the migration process. Then we get into the rapid discovery and the directional business case, right? So rapid discovery basically means that you either uh, depend on the customer's, uh, you know, high level data that the customer can provide to you. Uh, it might be from their CMDP platform, their asset inventory platform, and it might be uh, from uh, their existing monitoring tools. If they don't have anything, and if they allow you, we can also go ahead and implement a tool of our own, uh, which will be able to do discovery analysis of their environment, uh, where we can ingest uh, data manually also, and it can do cost modeling, it can suggest us right sizing of the target AWS environment. So, Again, um, this is a tool that AWS provides free of cost, which is TSO Logic. It is not available directly for partner to launch it in the customer environment. You have to uh, work with our ProServe team to get this implemented and uh, connected to the customer environment, wherein this tool will collect the information. And um, uh, the TSO Logic tool actually collects not only the information about the environment, it also collects about the performance data and um, the stress on the server, all this kind of information metrics. And uh, those metrics help it to do the right sizing, right? And uh, the more accurate the metrics are, uh, the more um, better the predictions or the right sizing are. And uh, therefore you can understand that, you know, it's not something that you can do as a one day kind of um, fetching of information if you plan to go for TSO logic. So you have to know that the customer is, you know, allowing you to get to that much of uh, time, um, give you that much of time to actually go through the full process. Um, otherwise, you know, you can also depend on let's say a quick vm dump from a vmware infrastructure that they might have which may have uh, you know uh, instantaneous uh, information about what is the current utilization on different different servers that they have uh, but 
then in that case your business case is not having the right sizing done properly uh, because you simply do not have the enough amount of data um, you just have a point in time data but you do not have a data which is over a certain time period wherein you can observe the uh, peaks and uh, valleys of uh, the utilization on the servers so if you can have a view to that then um, you know you will be able to do the right sizing but if you don't get that kind of a uh, data then make sure that you highlight that uh, that you know the business case that you're building is based on the limited amount of information that you've got or point in time information that you've got on basis of which you're creating the business case right and then uh, try to ask if they can allow you to launch and run tso logic for a while so uh, minimum for two weeks if you run tso logic it will give you some meaningful data and if you can run it for four weeks or about a month then the data will be of high quality right so one more thing that you should understand is um, there are these kind of different different business cases that we can talk about right so one is the detail business case which is the final outcome of the mrp right and uh, that's where you get to give the customer full details about um, how their application inventory is how their server inventory is what is the dependency between the various applications how are you going to plan the move groups um, you know for migrating into the cloud or uh, exactly how are you going to do the six hour or seven hour kind of treatment to the applications uh, you have a full visibility of the licensing constructs in the customer environment and accordingly suggest the customer what kind of licensing concerns um, there might be while migrating to the cloud right so um, all the enterprise discount programs uh, map whatever is applicable accordingly um, you can uh, put that also as part of our business case right but that's when you have a full fledged detailed business case done at the end of the mrp process for that um, you know you would have already got full access to the customer environment to run a discovery tool uh, to do detail analysis with the stakeholders and everything but that's not the case when you are just at the assessment phase uh, that is before you do the full fledged discovery and mrp phase right at that point you do not have so much of access and you have to basically build a high level business case and that's where uh, there is directional business case which is the ideal case otherwise it is the pricing and the tco comparison out of the pricing and the tco comparison obviously tco comparison is ideal and pricing is absolutely last option if you know there is a situation where you don't have so much of access to the customer information uh, customer is uh, not giving you that much time so at least you can give a high level pricing about uh, you know what is the like to like uh, ec2 ebs kind of uh, costing would be and uh, that would be just a pricing that's not even a proper comparison because you do not know what all things are there in the customer environment you did not get the understanding of the of something to build the overall tco uh, overall tco would include a lot of other things including uh, people cost including uh, the uh, maintenance cost uh, you have to know their hardware refresh cycle you have to know the data center cost all of that information is not available to you in that case uh, but you can still go ahead with the pricing if you get some amount of information in terms of let's say at least the inventory they can provide maybe they already have a cmdb and you asked for it and they give you the cmdb dump and um, you have got chance to talk to the customer have some understanding from them in that case um, you can go and submit a tco comparison so the difference between the pricing and the tco is obviously multifold but mainly pricing answers the question about how much aws is going to cost if i move into aws versus tco is about how much aws is going to save me money right so that's a better conversation so we will always recommend for you to try to get into the tco comparison at least and not go for the pricing and uh, obviously directional business case is the high level business case which you should be uh, trying to do by implementing a discovery tool like as i said tso logic in that case um, you you get to know full information at least about uh, the let's say licensing concerns or let's say uh, hardware refresh concerns um, you know you get to understand you know customers commitment 
to build a sort of a, you know to bake in some ri cost into your uh, pricing so all of this information if you have then you should create a directional business case at the end of the mra phase right at the end of mra uh, you do a small discovery and you do the high level directional business case right um, so this time the conversation would go around the benefits of getting into my aws and uh, it actually will also have planning of the mra phase that you know how exactly the migration can be executed right in terms of uh, you know the time it takes to get into that it will require two to four weeks as i said uh, you might need to run the tso logic tool and uh, get into detailed conversations with the customer to create a pricing so that way it will be directional business case but this is still not the place where you have done full fledged uh, application dependency mapping this is still not the place where you have taken up some uh, you know poc uh, you know application or some small uh, set of applications to do a quick pilot migration those things are not here this is only you going to the customer having discussions taking their cmdb dump maybe running some uh you know discovery tool which gathers information uh, over a period of time and accordingly gives you a suggestion right again the tool wise uh, tso logic and all these tools we will be discussing in our uh, detailed tool oriented session that we will have on monday same time all right so uh, that's essentially the business case part and the next part we will get into is the mobilize phase uh, where we will talk about the mrp before that i will just take a pause um, you know we have been discussing on the assessment phase for last hour and i will take a pause to understand if any questions are there hello um, chetan gautam any questions are there so far yeah so couple of common questions were there regarding whether you will get a uh, uh, this ppt uh, so i think as a part uh, as a process of this part because you will get a recorded session of uh, uh, right you know, so recording uh, no 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 so 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 gautam recording is not being done as a policy so recording will not okay. be given however um, i can uh, probably share the ppt i have to just do a sanity check if there is anything that is something that we cannot share but uh, in my understanding uh, probably i can share the entire ppt but yeah, recording so is good. not being done as part of our policy cool yeah. so uh, yeah so i think post filtering of any aws specific information we can share the ppts that's the answer right. so uh, second uh, question i think couple of people couple of candidates <coughs> raised Also, that whether it's a business oriented or it's a technical oriented uh, session that we are having right now, uh, I would like to highlight here. This is a, this is a common understanding about what is MRA and how do we do the discovery and mobilize and all that. So I would say this is an initial level conversation. Uh, yes, of course, there's a lot of deep dive that is required when you actually do the uh, uh, the full assessment at any customer's premises. So as and when we go, uh, obviously we'll. Uh, If if and when required, we'll do a deep dive session on that as well. Right. And so so as as I said, the context in the beginning, this is about uh, the process requirement that partners need to adhere uh, while executing the migration projects. Um, you know, both from um, you know following a standard approach to migration. as well as uh, for being um, you know eligible for consideration into the uh, migration competency program so uh, this is about the processes as i mentioned um, you know the tools related discussion there is a separate session on next monday where we will be having a tools uh, related discussion where we'll get into the technical bits uh, into more detail this is more about the processes Yeah, I think there is a question on how can we get access to uh, the TSO logic tool. Yeah, so the TSO logic tool is something that is um, actually implemented by our ProServe team. So on every uh, deal basis, um, if you if you reach out to your uh, PDM and um, uh, they will be able to internally reach out to the um, ProServe team. 
or if you're directly connected with the ProServe team, you can raise a request with them and they will be able to uh, set it up for the customer environment. So there is a certain amount of information required that you need to share with the ProServe team. And then the ProServe team will implement the tool. Uh, it is not something that is directly available to the partners for implementing themselves. Yeah, so I think then, uh, okay, there's a new question which is popped up. Once MRA is completed, is it okay to start with migration ourselves or should the regional AWS partner to be involved for implementation? So, I, I, all right, so, think, yeah. so, yeah, so the MRA sorry. is, uh, you know, just, uh, hello. Sorry, sorry, I can, I can, I can take this. Uh, this is Deepak. Okay. Uh, although I, I, I'm going to respond on the chat itself, but once the MRA is done, if the partner or the customer is self-enabled, where they can do the migration, they can go ahead. As they can reach out to one of the migration competency partners, or maybe somebody uh, with an Amazon team from the migration practice team, right? So they can help uh, with the overall approach. Thank you, Deepak. All right. So, Gautam, is there so any other question? Yeah, I think maybe we can question. we can answer the yeah, we, we can we answer can... the question on the chat on the okay. chat itself, and Abdeep, you can you can continue with the session. All right. Okay, so um, so as the last question was about um, what to do after the MRA, um, you know, MRA is obviously the assess part, and uh, then we have to do the MRP, uh, where we have the detailed uh, deep dive into the customer environment to understand, uh, you know, what all application dependencies are there, do some uh, pilot migrations. So that is a phase where we call it as mobilized phase right so in the mobilized phase we are talking about um, mechanism that uh, that is mrp or migration readiness and planning so this is when you have done the mra you have convinced the customer and customer is agreed and convinced about investing uh, some uh, amount for doing a detailed business case right uh, now this is a um, you know process where there will be cost associated significant cost associated because you will have to dedicate some people and uh, these people will be working on um, you know doing the discovery implementation tool implementation um, building up a um, aws environment where uh, initial migrations can happen some um, pilot applications will be picked up and they will be migrated actually to the um, you know cloud as an initial proof of concept so all of this is an amount of effort and um, amount of uh, let's say real uh, utilization of the aws uh, resources uh, which will cost some amount of money right so uh, that is a sort of a commitment you require uh, from the customer to get into the mrp phase and that is the whole objective of the mrp phase to entice the customer uh, by looking at the directional business case to uh, after understanding uh, how beneficial aws migration can be to actually sign up for the mrp phase wherein you know we have the processes such as discovery and planning uh, landing zone uh, skills and CO is uh, the part that is where we address the human skill part and um, you know obviously the objective is to create a migration business case which again is going to be input for the um, you know decision making for actually going into the migrate phase which is the next phase right so we will be addressing secret and compliance concerns operating model concerns and um, we will be uh, doing training with the customer uh, to prepare their team to be ready to cope up in a cloud environment, right? So uh, the end outcome of this whole mobilized phase is to have a detailed business case that the customer can agree to, uh, SOW that customer can sign off and we can start the migration based on a migration plan that comes up as a output of this particular phase. Uh, this is where customer will know that this is exactly how the migration will happen, right? So uh, typically, this might take a certain amount of time. So uh, MRP uh, process might take about uh, two, three months of time uh, for getting completed. And um, that, you know, is a planning that is required for doing the 
MRP fees itself, right? So after MRP, you will do the planning for the real migration. But even the MRP itself is a defined set of process and defined set of steps that you have to go through, right? So uh, starting with the discovery and the planning phase, right? So discovery and the planning is where um, you know we have the um, you know basically. As we were saying, uh, the previous MRA phase will help us build a trust with the customer. And um, once we gain the trust, once we understand the various uh, concerns involved in the, um, you know, let's say setting up a detailed discovery tool, and once we have addressed those dependencies, then we can actually go ahead and implement those discovery tools in the customer environment. Now, uh, discovery tool implementation is absolutely uh, not necessary as such. Uh, it is discovery to be done is a necessary step, right? So that means you need to somehow uh, discover all the applications, all the servers, network components, and be able to build a dependency mapping between them. Right, whether you implement a new discovery tool or if the customer is already maintaining good amount of um, you know uh, cmdb uh, they have all the uh, information maintained with them then that also is a, a good starting point now still having a discovery tool helps in reconciliation so for example customer might have uh, a set of information with them in form of excel sheets or some other mechanism and uh, that may not be the exact current situation of the environment so it is always good idea recommended idea to do a discovery and um, you know gather the information at that particular point in time uh, to understand the application dependency and also the various utilization so for example if you can run a tso logic again so tso logic will give you that whole detail about the environment plus the uh, utilization and will suggest the um, you know kind of uh, instance sizes that you have to pick up on the aws or um, you know what kind of uh, aws solution can be used for reducing cost uh, while doing the migration so it can suggest you on those areas uh, there are also other partner ecosystem tools which you can utilize depending on the situation and the fitment of the tool but doing a discovery uh, gives you the confidence that you actually have the right information and not depending on some outdated information however uh, they might already have certain amount of information uh, which might be uh, well maintained or maybe maybe actually disjointed maintained by different different teams typically you can expect them to have some sort of asset inventory and um, you know there might be some people who would know in detail about the in landscape uh, and they can give you that information when you do an interview with them you capture the information from them itself in form of a tribal knowledge and um, they might already have some monitoring tools where they're maintaining historical graphs so if you can gather the historical uh, performance data about uh, the different servers and the environments that they have then you can uh, you know create the sizing on basis of that also Right. Uh, however, from the AWS side, uh, TSO logic is one tool that I have already talked about. Apart from that, we also have uh, the AWS application discovery service, which can be implemented in the customer environment to gather information about the uh, customer, um, you know, servers and the applications, and to create a dependency mapping between them. Right. Uh, we have our partner tools like uh, we have uh, Risk Networks Cloudscape, which can be implemented, and that also can gather information and create a inter-CI dependency, which can be used then to actually create the set of applications that have the dependency right so uh, what i mean by that is that you can create move groups uh, wherein you can have certain applications that are core applications and most of the applications are dependent on those set of code applications and they will be typically um, the applications when in the actual migration phase you need to move first into the cloud environment um, because unless they are up and running you know the rest of the applications rest of the service will have issue right so uh, that kind of move group planning you can do you can order the applications in terms of the dependency in terms of um, you know which all applications need to be together uh, in order to function so there might be a strong dependency between them that if you just move one application the other application may not work right so um, 
this kind of information you can gather only when you do a deep discovery where you get to see the interstitial relationship right not just information about the servers or size of the servers but interdependency of the applications right and uh, once you get that then you can actually uh, have a real plan or a realistic plan for doing the migration uh, and in that realistic plan you will be having the effort calculation done properly to understand what would be the actual cost model and the tco right so uh, it also has uh, impact in terms of the uh, the seven hours approach that we can take seven hours is basically uh, seven types of uh, migration decision that we can take while taking on a migration and um, in that also this information set will be a input on basis of which you can decide whether you can do a lift and shift migration of the application or you would actually need to change some architecture or change some code component inside the application before you can do the migration all right so um so this is how uh, you know the whole discovery tool you know outcome would come up and uh, either from the discovery tool or from the cmdb data this kind of um, you know mapping can be done so if you let's say do not have uh, the discovery tool implemented although that is quite a mandatory uh, important step in the process but even without the discovery tool if you have manual data uh, then with doing some normalization of the data you can actually feed in this information into the mrp tool that we have in aws which is a uh, you know prosof tool again uh, similarly available from that um, accelerate panel that i just showed you earlier wherein you get to see um, you know a option to <coughs> import existing excel file or csv data so even if you have excel file data uh, by changing the headers and by changing the uh, csv headers you can upload that data and do a manual mapping of the data inside the tool and if at least the good amount of information is captured if dependency information is captured in that dump in terms of let's say if it's a cmdb data maybe there is uh, inter ci relationship information available there so uh, on basis of that the tool will be able to generate a map and show you so even though it's not a discovery tool um, you know it will be able to show you the interdependency in a graph format just like you can see over here right in a similar kind of a model and uh, obviously um, you know that same set of information uh, can be further in analyzed by the um, you know the tool the mpa tool migration portfolio analysis tool and um, that tool can then uh, suggest uh, the kind of um, you know migrations that uh, we can attend for or with the kind of server sizes that we can take uh, for the kind of information that we are fed in right so even though you do not have a uh, discovery done still with a uh, information in form of excel file or a csv export from a cmdb you can still go ahead and do the analysis by using the mpa tool and it also helps you in doing uh, the move group analysis so it shows you all the dependencies it shows you um, you know uh, how many connections are there from one application to another and the basis of that you will be able to do the move group and it also gives you a move group planning interface where you can actually put in the um, move groups in a sort of a project plan okay so basically uh, we are looking for the applications servers and their dependencies right and um, we are also looking for the performance metrics to identify peaks and valleys peaks and valleys means let's say if there is a um, you know application which is having you know occasional high utilization right versus an application which has a sort of continuous high utilization so for the one that has a con you know occasional high utilization provided it is a um, you know sort of a application that can work on cloud scale or you know the auto scaling architecture of cloud uh, then you can actually consider to design the cloud component in form of a uh, average load so whatever is the average load of that application based on that you can do the sizing of the cloud uh, you know server on which you're going to host the application and then uh, you can rent this spike uh, from the auto scaling mechanism 
right so that kind of optimization you can do only if you have the performance matrix properly and then accordingly you can right size the resources also uh, you can then identify the application stack for example is it a java stack or uh, let's say a php stack uh, what kind of components are there is it like um, you know php mysql uh, nginx or php mysql apache what kind of stack of application it is and you know is it uh, is there any kind of uh, unix platform that you have to migrate to aws or uh, you know how many are the windows servers how many are the linux servers what kind of virtualization technology is being used all of that information is again something that will make a lot of difference uh, if it's a vmware then there might be a different strategy of migration that you can pick up um, you know the migration strategy for a unix application would be different from a typical x86 based um, you know linux or windows platform so all those uh, information that you are looking for in this particular stage by doing the deep application discovery right and um, you are uh, basically trying to identify common patterns now common patterns is very important here right it's not only about identifying all the applications that are there but it is about you are identifying the common tech stacks that you have to handle because based on those then you can identify the kind of migration that you will embark upon and uh, the kind of uh, effort that you need to put together right uh, is there any uh, tool uh, that you will be using or if you are using tool then will there be any limitation of the tool in those kind of migrations right so all of these you can get to know from the patterns and um, actually um, in the same uh, you know accelerate interface i showed you there was a mpl which is migration pattern library i will come back to that again in the execute phase or migrate phase um, where we will discuss about what to do if you have identified the patterns right um, so the idea here is that this should this particular step should give you the complete visibility to the customer environment right there is no going back after this right so you should identify whether the the assessment tool that you are using is able to gather all the information or not if it is not able to gather all the information then you have to either take a manual approach to complete the information or add some extra tool uh, that will do the job now obviously um, the uh, tools that are provided the services that are provided by aws are free of cost but if you're then approaching some other tool for certain different kind of a um, you know discovery that you require uh, then obviously uh, there will be extra cost associated with it which will be part of the cost of the mrp process itself right so be cognizant of that but the fact is that you have to have a complete visibility after this particular stage that you have got all the information about the environment right so there are certain consideration aspects that you should have um, such as let's say whether you are going to use a agent based mechanism or a agent less mechanism for example let's say you have a um, you know tool that actually would run um, you know with a virtual machine to be deployed on the um, you know vmware platform and as long as it is deployed on the vmware platform it can gather all the information from the vmware itself right and uh, thereby there is no um, you know need to install individual agents on those uh, you know servers that are running on vmware it will collect the information from vmware and then give it to you um, but if let's say they are using a different hypervisor and you do not have a solution that will do the job on that kind of a platform um, then you probably have to install agent on those servers right or there might be some other reason some other platforms for which you have to implement agents so you have to have that planning done beforehand uh, before you get into this discovery phase and um, uh, based on that high level information you have to strategize the way you are going to do the discovery and what tools are you going to use and what services are you going to use okay so once you have done the installation uh, when you, once you go for the installation you would also um, need the buy in from the security team as we were discussing earlier in the mra phase and this is where mra phase again comes in handy the mra phase would have already told you uh, the state of the um, you know concerns with the security team and um, based on that um, you know you can now take a um, you know decision of how to approach the security team beforehand to get all the permissions uh, in place 
before you actually go ahead and implement the tool right uh, what is not a good idea is that you have actually gone ahead and implement the tool and that there was a lack of preparedness from your end or the customer security team did not give access uh, to the entire environment uh, for your tool to work so for example if there is a management vlan has to be created and a management vlan should have access to the entire set of servers and network environment that they have then that should have been created in prior and you should have deployed that tool in the management vlan only with that kind of access right so whatever um, their existing uh, data stores are and the locations are um, the uh, you know that information also you should be having you should be having the dependency discovery facility in the tool whatever you tool you choose and um, like for example if you use application discovery services from aws it will gather all the information but then you have to do analysis by yourself by using athena right so those kind of preparations you should have in terms of visualization and reporting um, that you will be doing on top of that um, you know tools information right and obviously another consideration is a cost right so the tools and services provided by aws are available free of cost so they don't inflate your um, you know overall uh, mrp process uh, budget um, so because that's also a important thing to consider because till now the full experience uh, has not yet started and so you should try to make it as rewarding as possible for the customer and in that sense cost also plays a decision making factor here although most important thing is that your discovery has to be complete and um, you know it has to have covered all the points right so as it is rational accordingly you will plan it but plan it beforehand and that's why mrf process will also help you right um the application prioritization has to be done which is a very important outcome of this discovery process which is about uh, once you get to know about all the applications once you are able to get to know about all the server mapping then you have to um, make a mapping of them in terms of the move group right so you have to understand for example the first thing being the business criticality of it right so is it something that large number of user bases are going to be affected if you um, you know touch that particular application as a um, you know first set of applications to move into the cloud right so then in that case you should not probably consider that um, you know you have to do a prioritization of the applications in terms of their business criticality and their environment priority so if it's a dev level um, you know implementation of application uh, if it's a dev server if it's a test server right non production servers they are easy um, you know easy targets that we can take for the initial set of migrations because one thing in this uh, process that we focus on is the um, rewarding experience um, you know quicker rewarding experience back to the customer right so which means um, you know we will try to do a good prioritization of the application so that the application that we select are um, actually able to nicely migrate to cloud building the confidence on our migration ability into the customer right so that uh, we get some levy with the customer when we take on the actual complex workload so this prioritization and uh, you know doing a decision making on basis of this prioritization is absolutely critical for the overall success of the migration project right and um, application complexity is the other part so there might be a particular technological stack um, maybe running let's say uh, you know cobol uh, application on a unix platform so then that stack is a complex stack right which might have a um, uh, you know different approach to do the migration for it right so that also is another aspect so this three pronged access uh, three pronged uh, you know uh, sort of uh, analysis of the applications is important in terms of application prioritization from a migration perspective right so um, you should have the low hanging fruits identified and accordingly this will be input to our move group planning right um, also one more important thing is the migration patterns in form of the seven hours right so basically um, you know this is a model that um, you know obviously gartner said as six hours and um, also uh, in aws we have it as seven hours 
and this is about you know how you take the application uh, to the cloud environment right uh, so the way you take to the cloud environment uh, there can be one approach which is lift and shift where you just take the application as it is and um, you do not change the platform of it you do not change the operating system or the way the database is hosted and you simply move it as it is into the cloud right now you can do that by either manual process or you can do that through some automated migration tools but in either case it is basically the same environment as it is migrated to the cloud now uh, most of the applications should be doable in this manner right there should not be any challenge uh, in taking an application like this now um, there is always a concern about you know whether uh, you should do a bit of modernization uh, first and then migrate or you should um, you know uh, you know move it first and then do modernization now both of these are valid as per the use case of this scenario however uh, to do quick realization of the migration to the cloud um, you know rehosting has a great impact right so if somebody does rehosting uh, in terms of the lift and shift then you can quickly show that the applications are actually moved into cloud and they are working on cloud and then you can embark upon uh, further modernizing it in terms of uh, doing the platform um, you know transformation or you know uh, some other kind of improvements on top of it so the second is uh, replatforming replatforming is where you have the model of lift tinker and shift lift tinker and shift is where um, you are actually you know moving the application without any code change right so there is a application you are moving it without any code change and um, the underlying platform however you are deciding to change so this can be for example um, you know uh, an application that you know um, may be working on a localized database implementation on a server and we are moving that onto cloud on top of our rds right so in that case the application code doesn't need to change although the application is now utilizing a pass service when migrated onto the cloud environment right so that would be a replatforming example then you have the refactoring option which is where the application is something that will not work as it is on the cloud or maybe even if it works as it is on the cloud maybe there is a business driver for deciding to change the architecture of the application to make it suitable to leverage various cloud benefits like you know the application should work with cloud apis the application should probably work with containers with some serverless architectures so in those kind of scenarios where the application is going to be not only migrated but also transformed then we are talking about refactoring where the code changes happen on the application itself now in some of the cases um, customers might also say that they actually are using a particular application but uh, that application um, you know is not um, uh, you know uh, required anymore right so it might be just application that was being used um, the, you know in some corner uh, but they don't want to take on uh, you know a paid service of aws to actually host that on the aws environment uh, because it's not that much important maybe uh, it was just a isolated case that some one department somewhere was running a particular monitoring tool and uh, there is an already a larger monitoring tool in the company um, and they can simply utilize the larger monitoring tool without you know migrating their application so there can be very much situations like that and um, in that case we decide to not to take any of these approaches and we actually decide to retire that particular application now if you are not retiring the application then there can be uh, you know one of the two cases which is either to retain or to repurchase so retain is where um, you know there is an application which has hard dependency on the local environment um, it cannot work on a you know cloud environment for some uh, data locality reasons or uh, some sort of a dependency on a particular type of hardware so if if that is the case then you retain that in the data center and uh, otherwise we are going to maybe maybe the customer is going to do a repurchase of that application uh, in terms of moving to a different uh, you know 
online service. So for example, let's say they are using Exchange and they decide to use AWS Workmail, right? So in that case, um, you know, they're basically moving to a SaaS platform. They're switching their, you know, uh, mail server. They're exporting all the mails, putting it to Workmail and using Workmail as the main server. Right. In that case, uh, the application itself did not need to move. We just simply replaced it with a new purchase by the customer. Right. So that's the case of repurchasing. Now, apart from this, we also have now got uh, VMware on cloud, in which case, if you have a VMware environment, we can simply move that to a VMware environment on top of AWS. So that's also another option that is there. But these are more or less the application migration patterns, which is something um, that you need to identify uh, during the uh, you know application discovery. So when you do the application discovery, you have to figure out that which all of these applications can go on to the rehosting model or the replatforming model. Right. And um, accordingly, you have to because you have to also realize the more uh, you, you know, for example, let's say, um, you know, rehosting versus replatforming in the replatforming, there will be a bit of extra work. So that is a extra human work you're putting in and that will also have an impact on the cost. Right. So this kind of, um, you know, although small change, but still it will have some impact. So which all of this application will go on to rehosting model, which all can we do replatforming, which all can we do, um, you know, refactoring or maybe replace it with a SaaS offering that we have. So that kind of uh, analysis has to be done basis of the application discovery and the move group planning that I was talking about. Right. Um, so. Another thing is that when you're talking about moving these applications, then we also have this AWS migration pattern library. Now this pattern library is very, very useful in terms of uh, if you have identified the tech stack of a particular application, the kind of application, um, you know, let's say Java, WebSphere, any kind of such application. And you want to see what is the best way or the best architecture to migrate that onto AWS, right? So um, you can actually leverage on this migration pattern library. And in this pattern library, this is the MPL tool. Uh, you can see the URL on the screen also. This is the MPL tool. MPL tool was part of the Accelerate. And if you go to MPL, migration pattern library, you get to see how different different kinds of um, application tech stacks can be migrated for example over here if you can do a quick search on sap you will find the you know process to migrate sap using something like cloud endure right or let's say uh, sql server database to amazon ec2 using cloud endure right so those kind of uh, patterns you can find and you can also see the corresponding R type. So if you look at these options over here, so these are the kind of uh, migration options that you have or the different different tech stacks and how do you migrate them. And corresponding to that, on the right hand side, you have the target environment where you can do that kind of a migration. For example, here you can see VMware Cloud on May AWS is actually the migration target, right? And in that case, you can see that type is relocated. So there is an extra R that we are talking about that because we have VMware Cloud on AWS, we are actually having another R, which is a relocate in case of VMware Cloud. Uh, REST is, let's say, re-architect, or re-architect is basically refactored. Um, so re-architect is where you are basically making change in the code of the application. So as a thumb rule, remember the re-architect or refactor is about code changes in the application. If you're not touching the code and uh, going to run it using any platform as a service solution on the AWS, um, then probably this is going to be a re-platform. And if we're going to move it as it is, like it was running on a server in the local environment, and you're moving into the AWS on a EC2 VM, then it's going to be a re-hosting, in which case lift and shift can be done. Right, And obviously, for doing a lift and shift migration, we have our um, you know own tool which is Cloud Endure. And using Cloud Endure, you can do the uh, migration in form of lift and shift. That is, as it is, it is on the current operating system. It will capture the backup of the current operating system, create a AMI image on the cloud, and launch it over there as a new virtual machine, uh, obviously with some modifications and um, your ability to customize it a bit more. So uh, Cloud Endure is a 
tool uh, that we have an offer for uh, rehosting uh, but obviously for refactoring rearchitect all these things there is a significant amount of manual cost um, you know human resource cost which will be involved so um, another point about this is that remember that this um, you know choices that you have do have a impact on the TCO. Uh, later on, um, we have a section where we'll talk about um, things that impact the TCO in the MRP phase. And uh, there again, we will come to this discussion. All right. So, uh, yeah, so that's about the, uh, you know, discovery phase. And um, we are still continuing with the mobilized phase, actually. And uh, in the mobilized phase, if you see, uh, we just talked about the discovery and planning. And the next thing is the landing zone. Now, landing zone is a sort of accelerator uh, that means it's a way to quickly get a thing done uh, that otherwise would have taken a lot of time and effort right and thereby having a significant cost reduction in your overall mrp cost right so it's a solution that basically helps you to quickly set up a you know multi account aws environment right and uh, by implementing aws best practices so what it does is it actually utilizes um, you know aws organization account and as part of the aws organization account it will basically launch different different um, you know managed accounts um, through the aws organization as a account vending machine so in form of that it will have a, a shared services account Right, so which will be used for uh, the directory services like Active Directory or some kind of ASO so integration. So those kind of things can be launched on the shared services. So they are shared across uh, the different different applications. Uh, there would be log archive account which will have um, you know S3 buckets, and um, you know the logs will be stored using the credentials of that account. Uh, there will be security account uh, created which will be for all the security tools so that they have. Says across uh, multiple um, you know networks and subnets that you create in the environment so all these accounts uh, will be created as templates and uh, the fact that you will have a landing zone means uh, you will be able to quickly create these accounts with the right privileges uh, with the right configurations it will be able to set up um, network environments um, you know with the best practices of aws it will be having um, the security best practices implemented uh, it will be implementing basically aws config and uh, aws config rules will be enabled uh, to make sure that you have um, good amount of security best practices implemented as part of it now this is provided as a ready-made set of um, you know code from the aws side and uh, by using it you can quickly create environments like a dev environment pre prod environment prod environment and um, you know launch various types of uh, services in those areas and then do the migration of the applications on top of that so when you decide with the customer that this is the kind of network architecture or this is a kind of um, environments or accounts that will be required to host the applications on the cloud so first you run this set of uh, you know cloud formation templates to create a um, landing zone and once the landing zone is created then you do the pilot migration so pilot migrations are the low hanging fruits that i was talking about in the previous section which is the discovery phase in the discovery phase we were doing application prioritization so it gave us the low hanging fruits in terms of the applications that are easy to migrate and which has not only easy to migrate which has a higher uh, you know chances of a successful migration so those low hanging fruits uh, will be picked up as the initial move group or initial wave of uh, migration to the cloud and uh, let's say a set of Eight ten applications, and uh, those applications will be, um, you know, migrated onto AWS using this landing zone. So, whatever is required for those applications to be hosted on uh, AWS, you can create them using the landing zone. Now, you can have, um, you know, the AWS provided code, which is uh, available open source in a, you know, uh, sort of a GitHub environment, and um, you can just get those landings on blueprints otherwise also and um, you know you can use that or you might have your own uh, landing zone templates which have created using the landing zone best practices that aws has mentioned uh, like for example let's say uh, you want to create a landing zone using terraform so that is also absolutely fine but uh, that 
has to follow the landing zone uh, best practices that AWS has mentioned. The similar kind of approach, if you follow it accordingly, if you build a landing zone, that's absolutely fine. But AWS provides you ready-made code that you can uh, use and get started, right? And um, then you also have uh, the uh, AWS control tower. AWS control tower is sort of a governance mechanism to oversee um, the migration to oversee the various um, you know accounts that you're creating as part of your landing zone um, you know the kind of um, permissions and everything is being given so um, aws control tower can be used for the overall governance of these environments that you're creating all right so uh, there is also application uh, sorry aws deployment format uh, frame, framework uh, which is uh, basically a framework to uh, manage and deploy resources across multiple aws accounts so while landing zone is creating multiple aws accounts and creating you know aws organization and all uh, on top of that you basically can do uh, deployment of environments, deployment of uh, configurations, and um, basically it uses the um, you know services such as um, code pipeline, code build, code commit kind of solutions, and um, that also is available openly as a GitHub uh, URL where you can go and uh, download the CloudFormation templates and um, uh, you know launch it as part of your initial implementation, right? So. This will help you implement your customizations on top of the landing zone. So landing zone, as I said, is a set of uh, pre-built codes provided by AWS. So on top of that, if you have certain customization to be done, then you can utilize the AWS deployment framework to push in your customizations into that. All right. So control tower we have already talked about and um, yeah, so this is basically a sort of a UI to check uh, the accounts and all. Um, then we come into the mobile is uh, skills and CUE phase, right? So um, this is where we are talking about the human uh, resource aspect of it. Now, human resource aspect, as in you know, let's say when you go and um, you know uh, talk to the customer, so they have uh, various um, you know questions in their mind right so different different people from different different side of the business will come and um, you know ask you different different questions so for example you know how would we uh, deliver let's say the business value right um, that might be something that a business person might ask you or uh, people might be concerned about um, you know that they are not as skilled to get onto AWS. Um, so maybe, um, you know, they are going to be not able to adapt the best practices or uh, let's say they have a strong implementation of ITL. And, and that's a very common case. A lot of customers, um, you know, have implemented ITIL and ITIL is not, um, I mean, ITIL as a framework is not always against, um, you know, something like a cloud scale. Uh, it can be very well mapped to a cloud environment, but the way companies would have implemented ITIL, um, that IT service management process uh, may not be exactly uh, compatible to the cloud as it is, right? So they might have questions around that. Um, you know, there might be questions from the security team, there might be questions from the platform team. So what is a good idea is to basically build a, a CCOE, Cloud Center of Excellence, and um, you know it should have um, you know sponsorship from the top management, and uh, they would be able to you know be the first mover or the um, you know people who will learn the cloud computing uh, fast enough, and uh, basically they will be um, you know. Uh, accelerate the whole cloud adoption model and um, uh, you know typically this is combined with building up of a, a framework for understanding um, how we quickly can arrive at a decision like for example if you have to integrate the itl processes then you know who are the stakeholders how to get the buy-in and um, you know how do we map all these things into cloud environment right so that kind of a model can be achieved easily if we have a cco in place So um, the objective of building a cloud center of excellence within the customer environment is that uh, establish a team responsible for mobilizing critical cloud resources 
right and um, uh, they will be they will be sort of uh, the initial uh, people who will pick up on the cloud environment and uh, would help us to build a training plan right and um, they will be uh, leading and executing the migration project so they will be the main stakeholders and um, they will be helping us uh, in the internal communication which becomes very important uh, during the you know cloud migration projects internal communications internal management of stakeholders these are the kind of things where uh, ccoe can help us a lot <laughs> All right, so before I move into the uh, next one, migration business case, I would take a pause here and um, see if there are any questions and um, then I'll move to the next phase. So after this, we will be talking about the migration business case and the rest of the part of the MRP and um, then we will get into the migrate and modernize phase. So any questions so far? All right, so I think there are, there are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hi. So I think there are a lot of questions coming on what is a landing zone. So uh, mm -hmm. just it's a basic framework that you need on AWS before you start, you know, deploying your actual uh, instances and actual workload, right? So when you set up, uh, when you go to AWS, you set up your VPC, you set up your security group, you uh, set up your uh, access and identity policies and all. So that's a, it's a collection of activities. That's what together we call as landing. Okay. So the, this is just multiple. Uh, okay. I think, I think uh, uh, one question was that there are only six hours I can see. I cannot see a seven. Yeah. So that's what I uh, told you later on that uh, the seventh hour is the relocate, uh, which is uh, the VMware on cloud and um, that that is basically where you do not have to do any kind of even rehosting rehosting is where you know you are basically changing the vm uh, in case of relocate it's not even changing the vm it is basically the same vm backup uh, going over there in the same virtualization platform so that's what we are calling as relocate Okay, so I think there is one question which even I could not get. So, which is the framework discussed currently shows a lot of parallel tasks. Do we have any standard on setting time frame for these tasks? So, I think uh, you are referring to that standard uh, uh, 6R diagram, right? Yeah, but okay. take, take the guys through that again. Yeah. All right. So, I think I think you're talking about this one, right? So, these are not actually parallel right so these are about you taking one of these paths right so as i said earlier um, you know you had to do application prioritization you had to check the business criticality environment priority and the application complexity and um, you have to also take into account uh, the kind of um, you know discussion you have had with the customer the kind of dependency mapping that you have identified all of these taken into account you have to take one of these paths of migration. So actually on the left hand side, you are basically starting the migration. And on the right hand side, you have actually done the migration to the AWS. And to reach there, you are basically taking one of these paths, right? So uh, it's not uh, you know, about uh, these being parallel options any, you know, that you can take. This is about uh, based on the previous inputs that will determine which path you're gonna take. Right. So, um, like, for example, uh, you know, as I said, uh, you're not going to do a refactoring, which is change in the code unless it is absolutely required. Right. Or if the customer has a certain vision to change the code, change the application for a certain kind of transformation. Right. Unless that is the case, you will not embark upon refactoring to start with, although you might keep it in a long term plan. So one of the things that we uh, talk about in case of application migration is that uh, there should be always uh, initial migration plan and there, there should be an optimized phase after which, you know, there will be modernization done. That is why if you remember the overall three phases, then it is assess, then, uh, you know, basically uh, plan in the MRP phase and then you basically migrate and modernize, right? So migrate and modernize is because uh, we are not only saying just migrate, 
we are saying migrate and modernize so after you migrated after that you should always try to do modernization to make it more cloud compatible but for 70 percent of your applications you are typically going to take the hosting route uh, which is just a lift and shift you're going to use a tool like cloud endure and uh, scan the source environment take a backup of it launch it as a new set of servers on the aws side right so that's probably going to be the most of the cases uh, instead of using cloud india you can also do manually or you might use some other tools that's up to you but that essentially is the rehosting process in using which you can do the most of the migrations and then some of the migrations say you might see that uh, it's beneficial to put it on a platform like for example if you host it on a rds it might be more beneficial in terms of cost and terms of performance than hosting a database on top of a ec2 so that uh, overall when you're considering your pco calculation uh, if you see that becomes a very uh, useful um, you know component then obviously by all means you should adapt that or if there is a directive from the company uh, the customer to actually go for a replatforming so then you can adopt that kind of approach right and uh, then obviously the retain uh, is um, or the retire are something dependent completely on a uh, you know different kind of a uh, you know cost set so as in uh, you know retain would be when it is absolutely not possible to move uh, which you should obviously double check um, and retire is when it is not required it is replaced by some existing tool already and repurchase is when it has a SaaS alternative right so these are these are the various ways people migrate to aws uh, there is nothing um, you know about um, these being parallelly available options whatever you have collected information beforehand and whatever analysis you have done beforehand that will lead you to only one path of these you will not have the confusion if you followed the previous uh, activities and then you will see that it's not actually creating two or three uh, you know ways in front of you it is just getting into one of them right because the previous uh, information that you've captured that is going to guide this decision okay all right so i think there are a couple of more questions but i think there is a repeated request for uh, having a break so uh, all right are all we right. yeah so are we going to have a break uh, here for maybe 5 yeah. minutes uh, yeah let's let's take a 10 minutes break uh you know people have been uh, up from nine o'clock so it's uh two hours straight so we'll have a break for 10 minutes after 10 minutes we will join back again and uh, then we'll continue with the rest of the phases so yes, please right, make sure to come back 11, uh, after 10 minutes yeah 11, all right So we'll start back at eleven uh, ten. Right now, eleven. We'll start back around eleven ten. All right.
Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yeah, over the you Gautam are Chetan. Yeah, right. you are audible. Thanks, Ravish. Yeah, so I Thanks. Think then, start. then let us get started. Yeah. Yeah, so there All is right. one question. So, uh, hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. I think there is one can question you? and then proceed. Uh, there's a question that which yeah. says that uh, as per my understanding, TS logic and application discovery, which tool we should use for complete discovery and which tool we should use for application affinity mapping. Right. So, so TS logic uh, does a bit of a different thing and the application device discovery manager does a bit of a different thing, right? So, um, application uh, discovery service uh, what it does is it actually you know can scan your environment and figure out what all are the applications running and create a dependency mapping between them right and uh, gather that information give it to athena for you to further analyze whereas tso logic is uh, a tool that can that you can connect with your existing servers. Uh, there is not a tool that will do uh, scanning of the environment and gather the information. It will be um, you know, configured to connect to your environment and uh, do monitoring of that environment to identify the performance graph, to identify the utilization graph so that it can do suggestions about you know what kind of instance sizes should you take or you know uh, which all applications have um, let's say more um, easy migrations possible so those kind of suggestions uh, you know tsology can provide to you right uh, you know it's it's more about a analysis of the workloads right uh, whereas application discovery service is about finding out workloads by a scanning mechanism and then creating dependency mapping between them so if your question is which one should you use for scanning the environment and creating dependency mapping that is your discovery service if you want to do the right sizing of the instances uh, while migrating then you need to put in tso logic to get deeper understanding of the uh, environment and the kind of uh, utilization requirement of each workload or rather each server that you're planning to migrate i hope that answers the question any other questions that are there Yes, yeah, so I think there is a question. Do we have a demo of Cloud Endure on Monday? I suppose uh, there is not, right? Uh, we will have a discussion on um, you know Cloud Endure and other tools. I will try to see if I can fit in a demo in the time slot. We will again have three and a half hour, and uh, I'll try to see if we can fit in a Cloud Endure demo in that. Okay. Uh, I think pretty much that's it. Could you please share details of migration for data integration slash ETL slash ETL DW application? I think you're talking about a data lake sort of thing. Uh, yeah, data lake. I think so. Yeah, so I think data lake migration can also be done. Uh, pretty much most of the steps will be similar to what we do for general migration. But yeah, there are some more technicalities involved in terms of uh, checking what kind of data is residing in that and you have to you might need to check it from a compliance perspective as well as data security perspective yeah data lake migration would probably deserve its own session to uh, go deep into that uh, which we can definitely plan later on this is more about the general process uh, not focusing on a specific technology yeah, now you can proceed. There you go. All right. Okay. So, um, as um, you know, we were discussing in the last topic that um, you know it's beneficial for us to have a cloud center of excellence established as our champions within the customer environment uh, to uh, basically make sure that the customer is you know having the skill sets and uh, the trainings done 
plus the communications and everything is done properly within the customer organization uh, so that you know it helps uh, ease the customer to get into the cloud environment uh, otherwise people challenges uh, might come up which is not something that can be easily solved so having a focus on the uh, skill set upgradation of the customer uh, people is important um, after that uh, we will talk about the migration business case uh, migration plan uh, kind of things so uh, one of the thing that i want to highlight in this place is that um, so far whatever we have talked about has uh, impact on the business case in terms of the tco calculation in terms of the um, you know uh, way we are going to do the move group planning the way we are going to plan the whole migration that will decide our efforts and those efforts will translate into our overall tco so in that sense uh, we have to take a look at the business case impact also and um, the you know we have already done one side of the business case during the um, you know mra process and that was more of a directional business case at a very high level and um, uh, you know we as i said you know we can do a directional business case only when that level of information is available otherwise we might have done a tco comparison so in this mrp phase we have to come out with a detailed business case right and um, this one is where it is um, you know will be backed up by actual data points uh, will be uh, detailed with the actual information that we have validated through the application discovery uh, dependency mapping um, you know based on the kind of move group planning we are doing the kind of skill set that the customer has everything taken into consideration uh, this will be a detailed business case which will be finally submitted to the management or the board uh, to actually approve the adoption of cloud so basis of this you know you will have the approval to go ahead for the entire migration project right so we would be obviously going for much more detail and much more high accuracy in this and um, that you know would have uh, certain aspects that you should be um, you know aware about now we actually uh, have um, you know uh, cloud economics uh, related session that we can plan uh, to go more deeper into uh, each and every aspect that you need to keep in mind but at a high level i wanted to highlight uh, some of the aspects that um, you know uh, would be crucial to uh, keep in mind while building up this tco and uh, that is one is the um, you know whole cost to migrate so one is the steady cost that is you know once you migrate you know how would um, you know do the management work how much is the costing of the uh, you know running the environment uh, for a certain period of time number of years and by when we are getting some uh, you know the tco actually goes down um, and you know gives us return on investment that is one part but then you have the whole cost to migrate in which you have to also consider some of the double cost which means uh, there might be certain applications which are crucial for the on premise environment as well as crucial for the applications that are being migrated to the cloud right so these are applications that are core applications uh, core service applications and they need to be available uh, to provide that service both in the cloud and in the local premise so that time this is running in two different places and you're incurring double cost on it or uh, you know so so you have to identify those applications and uh, accordingly plan for them uh, you have to also think about um, you know some of the uh, other applications which may not be able to cut over right away so they might need to run in parallel for a certain period of time now remember at this point you are in the mrp so mrp means you are actually not doing the migration um, you are planning to do the first pilot phase by leveraging the landing zone so landing zone is an environment that you create to do the uh you know migration to start up the migration to kick off the migration and um, that uh, you know uh, is where you you know just do certain application migrations and um, during that you are not doing actual full fledge migration so these are all things that you have to keep in mind and factor into your business case while you are actually not doing it so you know you have to you know do a good amount of thinking process 
to figure this pointers out that is there any application that i might need to keep on running on the cloud and the in-premise both together for a certain period of time or not if it is there then how much cost is going to be right at that time uh, you know in both the places um then um, you know uh, is there any like let's say um high level uh, you have to decide on which kind of application will take which kind of um, you know migration path right um, this this uh, actually may change also during the actual execution phase because in the actual execution phase if you're let's say for example thinking about a re-platforming or refactoring kind of a model uh, you might have to uh, change that based on what you actually experience during the migration uh, execution phase so uh, still you have to more or less get it right in terms of the um you know the cost to migrate uh, based on the kind of um, you know seven hours strategy that you have taken and then there are obviously the baseline uh, costs which are like um, you know the um, setting up the infrastructure putting in people you know the license costs you know sometimes the licenses um, may not be something that you can bring on to the aws uh, so that has to be counted for so for all those kind of things uh, you have to keep in mind while building that tissue analysis and um, there are certain levers using which you can um, you know enhance it so while there will be certain places where you know the cost will show up like increasing there are certain levers by using which you will be able to reduce the cost and that's what uh, we need to focus increasing the elasticity um, or picking the right pricing model or storage class these things can have an impact so if we talk about right sizing right sizing is something that i earlier also discussed that we have to monitor our applications peak and the valley uh, of its utilization right so if it is um, mostly um, you know staying in average utilization and then having certain burst right and there can be applications like that which which might take a burst in a particular time of the day right um you know popular example comes to mind um, you know in the indian context so let's say ircTC website right which would you know take a sudden burst uh, during the tatkal hours right so it's just a period of one hour or so when a sudden burst is coming but otherwise the application is um, you know not having that much amount of load right so there can be such applications and you have to you know do a sizing on basis of that also um, for the same sizing like same um, amount of ram or cpu there are multiple options in um, aws so you have to see uh, which kind of uh, instance type uh, would be lowest cost while not uh, you know sacrificing the performance aspect so it might be a different processor class than what is being used right now in the on premise but based on your analysis if you can find out that if the processor was being underutilized uh, on premise and on the cloud it is overutilized if it is you know better utilized not overutilized better utilized and thereby achieving the same amount of performance so then that is that is fine to do right so um, you need more but you are designing the cloud environment in such a way that it is getting fully utilized it is not um, you know underutilized like it would be the case for the on premises environment okay because of the less agility in the on premises environment it is very common to have less utilization in the on premise but in the cloud we have the application uh, auto scaling the flexibility of um, increasing the resources of a particular vm and uh, on basis of that we should do the right sizing that would have a great impact on the overall tco um, again um, that is a point about the increased elasticity uh, which is about um, you know let's say 
there are certain diff test environments you can remember all of these you are doing in your mind right this is not actually happening this is not that you have picked up a application you have moved and it is running there and then you are taking the decision this is all while creating the business case you are thinking over about that if these kind of applications are there such as these are classified as diff and test right do they always need to run on the cloud right or can you rather uh, turn them off on a schedule basis and if you think that they can be turned off you have to basically check out probably with the application team and all that they if these are not required all the time and only uh, needed on demand basis then um, you know while in the um, on premise it might not have mattered for them uh, on the cloud it will be uh, you know great cost saving tool if you can uh, create automated scheduling on for start and stop and that you can do very easily by using cloudwatch and lambda kind of serverless functions to actually um, you know schedule a start and stop for the particular vm uh, based on based on the utilization that you have understood from the application team again it will save significant cost right and um, again um, the auto scaling case as i was discussing based on the utilization demand uh, on demand uh, you can have the rent the spike model and the spike model is where you design the application for the base load that you're expecting and whenever the spike comes auto scaling takes care of it and after the spike goes you are back to your base average then obviously you also have different different pricing models you can have reserve instances um, you know for longer commitments uh for a particular instance or you can have spot instances which are you know randomly allocated available uh, free instances for running your application obviously spot instance would need the application to be able to support that the architecture wise or maybe at a code level it has to support that a uh, kind of architecture um, so if it doesn't support it might need you to consider refactoring uh, in those applications so that would be a trade off that you have to think about so if it's like a uh, refactoring then is it worth uh, you know changing the architecture to leverage the spot instances um, in terms of the effort and all right so all of that uh, you have to keep in mind but if an application is capable of handling the spot instances if the architecture allows you to do that without refactoring then by all means you should be leveraging spot instances and that will again greatly reduce your cost uh, we have had customer cases where uh, spot instance utilization has um, you know severely um, you know created uh, different tco right i mean uh, the cost have been lowered much more for example you know uh, i can think of a particular customer case where um, you know the costing was probably 4 million or something and um, it came down to be uh, 4000 uh, dollars um, basis of utilization of spot instances and um, then we have the savings plans which has also been introduced wherein you have a flexible pricing model uh, based on long term commitment that you can leverage across different different services of aws and um, still have a very uh, reduced costing so you have to think about how to utilize these uh, better and um, you know which applications would be suitable which applications would be able to take benefit of these so accordingly if you do the right pricing model then that would also significantly lower down your cost um as i was saying so spot fleet can um, you know really reduce the cost uh, while giving you high amount of availability and um, uh, that is because you know uh, if your application supports uh, then then you can actually have um, you know significant benefits out of spot instances right um so the fourth leverage that you have is the storage class so this is something that sometimes people ignore uh, but uh, this is having also a very significant cost benefit so if you have um, you know categorize the applications um, you know so far we have been talking about application categorization application prioritization but remember while doing all of this you have to also take a look at the data and the way the data is being accessed by these applications and the users so if there is a, a set of data uh, that is actually going to take a huge amount of space but they are not used frequently 
uh, like for example let's say you are working in a media uh, customer environment and the media customer actually um, has a recording of previous uh, series or let's say uh, you know maybe a news media company having records of the previous um, you know news articles and all uh, which they would always have a different different kind of usage requirement so uh, obviously the current few days or current few months uh, they would be you know requiring a frequent access but maybe a year old you know pay you know capture of a paper uh, will not actually require any uh, frequent access and would be occasionally accessed right um, or you know uh, there is no certain way to know which one uh, is going to be accessed more by users uh, maybe there was a good article in one particular uh, edition and that would be frequently used by users but that's not based on how old that paper is it is based on the how good that article is right so in that case you don't even know so in such kind of scenarios you can turn on the s3 intelligent tiering to automatically identify um, you know which kind of uh, data uh, would be frequently used uh, which kind of data are infrequently accessed and um, they can be put onto a, a cheaper storage or maybe for some of the applications um, some of the data you actually do not have uh, that much of a high availability requirement so then a lesser availability um, you know storage environment like one zone um, infrequent access can be uh, picked up as a uh, solution right um, you know archival also you have glacier and glacier deep archive so glacier um, is cheap but glacier deep, deep archive is even cheaper if your app, you know if your data is such that it will you know actually uh, it doesn't matter how much time it takes to you know retrieve the data and uh, people are okay to wait for hours and so so even decarp i will have a significant cost benefit right so while doing all the application uh, analysis it is also important that you understand your data and uh, the way they are frequently accessed right and this is a very very important information which can significantly reduce your cost impact all right so that is another thing that we should keep in mind now uh, earlier we were talking about these um, you know different different seven hours of migration strategy and um, they have a significant impact on the tco calculation also as i was saying um, you know the cost or the effort increases as you go from um, you know in this diagram from the top to bottom um, you know obviously uh, relocate would be very um, you know cost effective compared to any of the other solution so if you have uh, you know let's say vmc and um, you know vmware on cloud solution and you are doing a relocation basis of that that would be extremely extremely cost effective uh, from a migration perspective and uh, then you have the rehosting being the cheapest option uh, between the three ways you can migrate an application to the cloud right um, you know retain retire or repurchase are not exactly migration of the application to the cloud they are either you are you know not using it or keeping it in the premise or you are repurchasing it to replace it right so um, between the three options that are for actually migrating the application to the cloud rehost is going to be the cheapest option which is a lift and shift that means you have something on a server and you migrate it directly onto ec2 let's say and um, that would be the cheapest in terms of the effort that you have to put together into it um, there might be however some um, you know impact in terms of uh, licensing and all but the rehosting model is going to be having the least amount of effort you can basically run a cloud indio and cloud indio can uh, do a bulk migration uh, by using the lift and shift mechanism uh, replatforming would require some amount of effort uh, but might give you significant benefits so going for a rds um, might significantly give you performance benefits as well as cost benefits considering the high availability architecture that rds can provide out of the box and um, so these are these are examples where 
um, you know, while the solution could be also implemented as a rehosting, uh, because of the uh, overall, you know, TCO benefit of moving into a PaaS solution, uh, you might want to consider replatforming, and um, that that would actually have uh, a bit more effort but then it's a balancing act between the effort that you're putting in and uh, the you know benefit that you're getting it out of it uh, refactoring is obviously gonna get a lot of um, you know effort into it it's a effort from the uh, development team it's a effort from the deployment team uh, who are gonna set it up uh, it's effort from building the architecture on the cloud to support that kind of a uh, application like let's say if the application team decides to go for a microservices architecture and for that you have to set up and maintain a you know let's say a kubernetes or a container cluster on the aws and then um, you know uh, the deployment of the application has to be done in a different way it's not a lift and shift and it's a significantly changing of the code so in every aspect that increases the cost right so your effort should be to have more amount of uh, rehosting uh, as long as it does not compromise anything for the customer and uh, then um, you know leverage replatform intelligently um, uh, with a trade off in mind and then refactor obviously wherever there is a directive from the customer or uh, there is a significant cost benefit uh, achieved by refactoring sometimes it might be that that is your uh, entry point for the migration and um, you know that cost benefit is something that the customer is interested in, and hence considering cloud migration so um, so that obviously would be then the case but in a general sense rehosting uh, has significant amount of less effort and therefore should be prioritized while thinking about the migration or you can obviously take a migrate and modernize approach which means you're not just keeping it as it is once you migrate to the cloud after that you have a long term um, you know sort of a plan uh, presented to the customer that how after migration you will take care of uh, modernizing the application once it is onboarded on cloud right uh, so migrate and modernize is anyway as an option is there so you should prioritize rehost all right also uh, one point that you should keep in mind that if you are dealing with map deals right uh, if it if your migration deal is being considered under migration acceleration program then both at the assess stage as well as the mobilize stage um, you have uh, the funding coming from aws and um, while you're calculating the overall tco that funding will take away a significant amount of load uh, from your tco and um, that should that should make your tco a bit more healthy than it is right so uh, obviously consider that and that is why you should be always trying to get into the um, you know map kind of a deal and as well as uh, comply to the map processes requirement so that is why we are having the entire session uh, to make you aware of the process requirements of the map deals wherein um, you know if you are taking on a large deal which otherwise can be you know considered for map uh, you you should be able to get that funding by complying to the, all the requirements all the processes that you should follow because in case of map deals um, you know these kind of requirements to um, you know apply for aws funding which obviously has a huge tco benefit um, in your overall tc analysis uh, will will be approved only on basis of the quality of the process that you have followed and if you have followed all the processes all the uh, mechanisms are in place uh, then the funding is approved so from that perspective um, you know this process adherence is very very important um, many of us focus a lot on the uh, aspect of actual migration uh, you know doing the migration directly and you know moving application to the cloud but if you're not following the processes then um, you know there are challenges which happen and we keep wondering that why this challenge happened and that's probably because you did not follow the right process which is why at aws we focus a lot on the process aspect the best practices approach of it and our map funding is um, against the condition of you know following the process and the adherence to the framework that we have been discussing so far all right 
So then we have uh, security and compliance operating model. Uh, so security and compliance is basically about, you know, general best practices of AWS. So these are actually uh, very well aligned with the well-architected framework of AWS. In the well-architected framework, um, you know, whatever has been suggested, um, if you just keep those in mind and accordingly design your um, solutions, so then, then you wouldn't have uh, much of a problem in following these. But um, you know, you have to have specific focus on the um, you know identity and access management. Um, you have to make sure uh, common things like MFA is enforced. Um, you know, you're not keeping the root account and making use of the root account uh, abruptly. Uh, you're basically uh, using only IAM accounts, and um, you know you're not using username and password hard coded or um, you know access key secret key hard coded. Rather, you are using IAM roles, right? So those kind of standard IAM best practices is uh, what needs to be maintained while doing the migration and these are these are again also the points that are considered and analyzed uh, when you basically apply for the map deal so when you apply for the map deal uh, and um, you submit your business cases uh, these are the points on which um, there is a lot of focus which are kept right so that all uh, general health uh, based on the a well architected framework that you have to keep in mind so again logging and monitoring part uh, you have to make sure that uh, log access rules are properly in place um, you have um, you know central logging and alerting mechanism kept in um, you have um, some networking configuration done properly to enable logging and monitoring so all of these um, would be also uh, looked into and um, similarly, infrastructure protection is another way of uh, basically defining the security part um, where you have to make sure that you have implemented a web application firewall, you have maintained the secrets properly, certificate management is being done properly, right? Um, all the uh, you know, VPC endpoints, private links, these kind of strategies you have to keep in mind. Uh, again, as I said, this is uh, basically the well architected framework and the consideration that you would normally have um, in order to secure your environment, all of that is something that you have to make sure in case of the design that you're doing for the cloud migration. So data protection, KMS, um, you know, key management, all of that. Uh, and again, another part is a very important part is actually uh, from the operations point of view, making sure that your uh, whatever migration structure you're building uh, that is actually also uh, following certain amount of itl mechanisms and are compatible with the itil uh, solutions that are in place by their customer because as i said earlier also there would be questions around that because they have probably got um, you know deep ITL implementations in their company and uh, they would probably want you to follow ITL uh, processes or adhere to those processes. So how you migrate them to cloud, but still, um, you know, make a connection with their ITL processes and have all the uh, management uh, done accordingly. Like let's say every security incident or normal incident management, how do you, how do you, um, you know, communicate that? What is the standard operating procedure uh, for incident response or resolution. So how are these audited? Everything you should have, um, you know, detailed out in your uh, migration readiness plan, right? So um, this particular phase is migration readiness and planning. So in this part, it's not only that we are, uh, you know, looking at how do we do the migration, it's also about how we are keeping the processes in place. So that's where incident management comes in. And similarly, you have to also probably look into chain management, configuration management. They will also probably change significantly when you think about redoing on cloud. And you have to make sure that uh, customer's ITL process and everything are mapped with it. All right. So next is the operating model. And um, in the operating model, uh, basically, we have to make sure that all the standard operations are being managed when you do the migration. So you have to make sure that backups are happening. You have to make sure monitorings are happening. And um, you know, as I was saying, 
change management, normal incident management, event management, uh, configuration management. These things will have an impact when you migrate into cloud. Um, you know, we will also discuss this uh, afterwards uh, in the execute phase or migrate and modernize phase. Um, but yes, you have to you have to define that in the MRP also. So one thing is that once you migrated, how do you optimize this? How do you uh, you know manage this? Uh, you know, and enhance the processes maybe. But to begin with, you have to convince the customer that there will be no disruption in terms of their existing governance model, right? So because that's what uh, is sometimes a sore point for uh, you know many uh, customers thinking about migration. Uh, they don't want to lose the control and the governance control that are in, put in place may not be always uh, native to cloud architecture. Uh, so you have to design a solution that uh, basically feeds back into their mechanism and uh, makes them comfortable about uh, having the governance um, you know on top of the cloud environment as i was saying so these are the areas or domains uh, that you should be addressing in your migration readiness planning uh, both from the perspective of making it more robust when you submit to the customer as well as um, as i was saying in order to comply to the best practices that um, aws suggests as part of the migration competency and um, you know map deal requirements right um, now uh, these these um, you know are like all standard itl processes but they have to be redefined like for example let's say if you have changed the chain management process on the cloud by implementing an ansible uh, or you know ops works based puppet chef so in those cases uh, you have to write that down you have to convey that properly to the customer that uh, this is how it is going to happen going forward however uh, it will feed in back into your chain management in this particular manner there will be probably an alert there will be probably an update to a ticket mechanism something there will be and you have to make sure that is you bring in in terms of the operational domains and you address them all right. Um, there are also operational runbooks, guides, and templates which are available from AWS. So um, again, you can reach out to your partner development managers who can help you access these. And they are ready-made runbooks about how do you, um, you know, structure backups and storage. Right? How do you uh, do application performance monitoring? Uh, there are guides and uh, templates which are available which you can access. All right. Um, migration expertise right so migration expertise is about um, you know the fact that you have to have these um, you know uh, migration done uh, with involvement um, uh, of the customer in terms of uh, both their people being utilized plus uh, you have to showcase that you are able to do this at a faster speed um, you know in a more um, thorough manner in which um, you are focusing on accuracy while not uh, sacrificing speed or focusing on speed while not sacrificing accuracy right so basically uh, what we suggest here is that you should be developing what we call as a migration factory and uh, focus on the migration velocity migration velocity is basically how fast you are able to migrate applications and uh, you cannot do that uh, enhancement uh, just by you know uh, doing things faster in terms of uh, working in a sequential manner what you have to do actually is you have to make it parallel you have to uh, follow uh, just like in case of uh, the application development models uh, they used to do waterfall model of application development in which you know you create the application part by part but each part you take after you finish the previous one and that way uh, it used to be very uh, you know long duration of every application development project and later on uh, you know they adopted the agile methodology in agile methodology they have got this um, you know small sprints uh, with certain target objectives that they achieve in parallel so they are they have divided the team into multiple uh, groups or you know people and then they uh, you know pick up these small targets and they achieve in parallel uh, by running individual sprints Right, so that same thing can be applied in case of uh, the migration as well. 
right? So what you can do is you can take up that clue from the agile methodology and uh, you can have the migration move groups created in a way. That's why I was saying you have to do the prioritization uh, back when we discussed about the application prioritization aspect, you have to do the prioritization very well. And um, then you would be able to, uh, you know, identify the low hanging fruits, identify the, um, you know, short targets. And once you have defined those short targets, you can basically create a, a sprint board uh, where, you know, small, small migration targets are given uh, to you know group of teams uh, which are working in parallel and they're achieving these migrations in parallel this will significantly increase your um, speed of migrating to the cloud uh, giving a much faster realization of benefit to the customer right and um, obviously you will start with the low hanging fruits but the same apply same applies um, you know with gradual increase of complexity in the applications that you're migrating right so just like uh, waterfall to agile model improvement in this case also uh, you will be able to migrate multiple um, migration multiple applications uh, instead of migrating one application at a time right so all in parallel so that's what um, you have to sort of uh, achieve and uh, obviously you can uh, you know take help from the uh, aws team in terms of validating the architectures that you are putting in to the customer environment um, you know you can you can build up your documents you can send them for review and um, you know validate those architectures validate those solutions and then implement this migration factory model to speed up the whole process all right so yeah, so another part is that, um, you know, there are many, um, you know, learning materials which are available to you as partners. Uh, take leverage of that and um, do practice these migrations and um, practice the uh, various mechanisms that are um, we are discussing. And um, thereby, once you have knowledge of them, then you'll be able to apply them in these area, this kind of uh, migration deals. So, um, you know, next day uh, when we have the migration tool session i'll be uh, you know taking you through the various tools and how you can uh, self learn about those tools as well as uh, how you can um, you know during the session also i will try to fit a demo uh, to take you through some of them but you know by all means try to get more hands on with these technologies so that you can utilize them all right so we come to finally the migration plan and uh, this is a final outcome along with the business case that we discussed earlier and um, in the case of migration plan um, you know obviously define all the methodology and process uh, for all the workloads um, one of the requirement in case of our you know migration uh, um, you know competency as well as uh, in case of the um, you know validation that we do for map deals uh, we require uh, application specific um, you know details about your methodology and process so application specific means that um, you know at least in terms of the tech stacks that you have identified there is a patterns that you have identified you have to make sure that all the patterns are addressed in your migration plan right that you submit to the customer as well as you submit for approval for map deals so um, the processes um, in terms of methodology and process in terms of it should have the architecture diagram uh, it should have the landing zone diagram all of these things should be there and um, you should definitely um, you know build up a resi chart responsible accountable consulted and informed chart uh, to make sure that you have identified who all people are the right stakeholders for the entire migration and um, also block time from them one of the common thing that i have uh, seen is that um, you know when you start a migration project uh, you have not clearly articulated the dependency uh, you know sometimes you define the dependency in terms of technical terms but not on the human terms that certain people are there required for you know approvals or maybe authorizations or um, you know they are the reviewers in the process so these dependencies have to be called out in prior their time in calendar has to be reserved in prior if for some reason uh, such um, you know timeline cannot be met 
maybe your migration process uh, took a bit more time and you know you need to change it uh, make sure you change that uh, block of time uh, whatever time block you made you know just um, inform the person again block another time based on your current uh, plan but make sure that their times are blocked properly so that they are available when you actually need them during the process because that otherwise becomes a big bottleneck right so um, making sure you have a proper rasi uh, you have uh, articulated that in terms of dependencies and uh, highlighted that to the management make sure your communication is always clear and there is no uh, you know expectation mismatch or some misconfusion right so uh, that is very important also migration plan would have the entire sprint board uh, mechanism that we just now discussed so it should talk about all the applications that we are planning to migrate which we call as application uh, backlog uh, the mechanism that we are trying to use and the seven hours model that we're trying to use for those applications to migrate them and um, you know possible timeline for those prints uh, that we are targeting to achieve them by right so these things should be part of your migration plan sorry just a moment All right. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about. That uh, you know, you would be basically creating these sort of waves uh, in terms of the migration plan, and um, these waves, you know, st will start off with a wave one, and that wave one is basically the initial low hanging fruits of the migration, uh, a set of uh, 10, 20 applications that you have identified, or maybe uh, just keep it within 10 um, that you have identified, and you're gonna migrate them uh, in the first wave, right? <laughs> and once that migration has um, you know had the success um, you know or you have just started it uh, in parallel you have started the wave two in parallel you have started the wave three so they will probably have a bit of delay also that's also fine but they will have to come in form of multiple parallel waves and um, you know that's the you know sort of the wave plan you call it or you call the sprints um, in which you'll take them up but these um, you know migration waves have to be planned uh, in the migration plan and um, you know so that so that the overall migration does not take as much time as it would take uh, in a waterfall kind of a model and again this migration move group planning and wave planning entire thing you can do through the migration portfolio analysis tool i told you about this earlier also migration portfolio analysis tool will be able to take in your input in terms of uh, what is the environment create dependency structures uh, show you the dependencies you can create move groups there and then you can put them into wave plans and um, it will create the reports that you need uh, so that you can submit that as part of your migration plan and apart from uh, the migration portfolio analysis tool there is a whole bunch of tools which are available to you as part of the migration central toolkit um, you know which is also available for you to use all right so this again uh, shows you the way uh, the sprints can be designed right and this actually shows you um, the sprints in the form of uh, let's say um, from left to right if you see uh, so cloud coe design project management workshop um, you know basic landing zone mvp secret and compliance workshop these things can happen in parallel right um, then adim encryption some base environment is created incident response infrastructure logging and monitoring the core services are brought up and um, then you have all these um, implementations of uh, let's say ami patching backups um, you know adim encryption all these things happening in parallel right uh, so this shows you how you can parallelize the work now this is by no means prescriptive this is just an example of a project how you know they can do parallelize work right and um, that's just to show uh, that you know you can actually break down the work in sprints and you can have them the migrations done in a wave plan to actually 
do a quicker faster migration okay all right which brings us to the execute phase and uh, this is the last phase we have about half an hour left and uh, i would like to take a pause here for five minutes to take any questions that might have come so gautam parvesh uh, are you guys there is there any question yeah there's one question i could not exactly understand uh, how to know mm -hmm. who is our partner development executive for the operational run book i'm not sure what exactly okay. This is from no, 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 no. I think, I think, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, partner development uh, manager, as in, um, you know, he would be the person who would be working with you from the AWS team side, um, you know, uh, as a, as a partner manager. So, you can just reach out to him if you are if you are looking for any of the, um, you know, tools or any of the materials that I mentioned in the uh, session. So if you are looking for any of those, then you can you can reach out to him and him or her, and they will be able to uh, bring those documents to you. Yeah. So in case you want some sample operational runbooks, etc., maybe you can reach to the PD. Yeah. I think so. Uh, um, there are certain questions on where do you get the full information so maybe i think i have already pasted the link which is the default link for from aws for uh, migration so you can go there there's a lot of video on demand etc that you can go through it uh can you elaborate on data security requirement and security aspect yeah that's a critical question i think uh so you need to be very familiar with uh, security and the shared responsibility model that we talk about when we talk about AWS. Okay, so there are certain parts of security that is taken care by AWS, and then there are certain part of security which is basically the responsibility of customer. And primarily, the role of a partner comes uh, somewhere in between, uh, where you need you as a partner and you as a trusted advisor of the customer. You are supposed to tell to customer how to take care of different aspects of security which is customer's responsibility, right? So for example, how to take care of the data, uh, how to take care of the data in transit, how to do a backup and all those things. So this is very important. Uh, I'm just typing away in this box itself. There's something called an AWS shared security, uh, sorry, shared responsibility model. I highly recommend just go to AWS site and, and have a look at it. Okay. So that's it. Then I think there is a question of how do I know who is the partner contact for IBM? Uh, I'm not sure who is our, who is partner contact for IBM. Probably you will have to write one to one to Deepak or Abrajit and then we can take it forward. Yeah, uh, uh, I think Deepak would be able to uh, tell that. Deepak, are you there? Uh, probably I can answer that question. This is Abhinav. Um, for IBM, it's uh, Rohan, Rohan Chandrahas. Uh, I'm just leaving my and Rohan's email here as well in case uh, for IBM specific questions, you can reach out to us. All right. I think there's one question. Do you have a sample of fixtures, if not real end to end migration covering? All we discussed here. So I think we we already have. If you go to the home page of AWS migrations, uh, you'll get a lot of case studies which are already there. So there are use cases and there are case studies. So you can actually pick it up from there. Okay. So I uh, let me just uh, okay. I, let me just put uh, paste in the link of cloud migrations. You can go. You can reach here and you can see all those case studies and a lot of customer references which are also publicly available. Uh, yeah, so I pasted the link. I think pretty much we have covered everything. All right. Then this is the last part um, that is basically when you have done the migration planning 
and um, you know you have basically um, got the business case submitted the migration plan submitted and the customer has given you a go ahead to actually go and do the migration then we are talking about um, going ahead and executing the migration and that's the migrate and modernize phase again as i said earlier uh, we always refer to it as migrate and modernize because um, you know you might do a lot of lift and shift to get the customer quickly onto the my you know aws environment but you should always have a long term plan to make it um, you know modernized and to make the customer take more benefit of the cloud environment and the cloud migration then only you know your tco also will look good in terms of uh, multi year engagements otherwise um, you know you you will um, you know as i said uh, initially there is a huge migration bubble uh, which spikes up the customer cost um, while migrating into the cloud so uh, the modernization aspect is also important modernization is not only that you have to change the application architecture or anything it is just about optimizing the uh, application and the workload on the cloud by continuously monitoring the workload uh, you know by various means right so um, so again uh, we started the wave plans we defined those wave plans in the uh, migration plan part of the mobilize phase right however um, the the only part that will execute in the mobilize is the wave 1 right so wave 1 is typically part of the mobilize phase it is the first set of application that after creating the landing zone and everything you would be doing initial pilot migrations and that would be your wave 1 uh, wave 1 once you are done with then you should get into full fledged migration in which case customer has already agreed on isw and signed off the deal with you and you are starting off the migration as per the wave plan that you have created in the previous case right and um, the structured wave approach is actually uh, the most significant impact on the tco right uh, because uh, what happens is you get a quicker uh, period of uh, realization so uh, while you know earlier also we have discussed about this particular diagram uh, where we have discussed that the adoption of uh, let's say the migration readiness assessment actually um, increases the realization sorry but decreases the realization time and therefore increases customer experience uh, wave approach actually uh, does a significant reduction of timeline and also uh, you know has a therefore good amount of impact on the cost benefit realization so uh, in order to understand more about uh, such kind of migration best practices um, you know how to design a planning how to uh, do migration at scale by leveraging these kind of uh, you know wave plans or sprints uh, you can always refer to the proserves uh, migration central uh, where you get all this information and again uh, you can reach out to your partner manager to get any of these documents if you do not have the direct access yourself and um, again uh, as i said uh, the migration central probably you will not have access directly as a partner uh, but you can uh, you you can check out with your pdm and uh, they will be able to arrange either access or the documents uh, to migration central migration hub is again uh, you know dashboard where you can check and track the progress of application migrations that you're doing so uh, that's also a useful tool and um, it can generate recommended mission types based on the information that you supply um, it offers visibility into the application portfolio um, you know um, you know you you start the integrations uh, with this uh, you know migration hub with other products and then it uh, gets more and more information and as information comes in you, it gives you a richer dashboard right so uh, migration hub can be leveraged and as we were discussing um, you know we should uh, implement a migration factory so migration factory is nothing but that sprint based um, you know migration approach the wave based migration approach in which people are working in parallel to migrate the applications to the cloud 
right so um you have to make sure that you are constantly um you know designing the solution for the application that you're migrating to the cloud um building and migrating then integrating with the existing endpoints like for example um if the application needs to be integrated with a monitoring tool if the application needs to be integrated with a backend it and system um or email server so all of those integrations you do and then you validate and then once you're happy with the migration you do the cutover after the cutover it's it's running on the cloud environment and um, you know then it's time for you to further optimize it so optimization can be done at a process level it can be done at a um, you know operational optimization it can be done as a application optimization and um, you know again by monitoring the utilization of the server you can also decide to do a cost optimization there right so um, continuously uh, migrating these applications and then taking on uh, the optimization approach on top of it by leveraging some monitoring tool or some mechanism is something that is highly recommended because then it has a long term impact on the tco um, one of the thing about uh, these optimization aspect is you know application optimization or process optimization is anywhere there but one thing that you should be focusing on is also to operating model optimization so uh, this diagram basically shows how um, you know the cloud operating models um, you know can be you know what you started with that is you know traditional way of having a separation between developers and operations team and um, there would be like you know the operations team uh, some people are managing it from an application management perspective some people are managing it from a infrastructure or platform management perspective but they basically separated out and uh, then what you can do is you can have um, you know basically created a sort of cloud ops architecture where you have a cloud team and a development team right so the cloud team manages the cloud operations and the development team manages um, you know development side of application right and then uh, the ultimate uh, way to get it fully optimized for a cloud environment operating model is to get into a devops model now again you can see itsm is anyway there in all the cases so itsm uh, doesn't change itil framework also does not need to change uh, some people have the and the itl processes or the implementation of the itl framework in a new kind of itsm process which works with the devops right but the same change management same configuration management all of them will be there and that's what you should be focusing for so as i was uh, saying earlier when i talk about or when we talk about application migration and modernization and modernization basically refers to the optimization in various ways we are not referring to um, let's say just making the application migrate and then making application compatible to the cloud in terms of applications own refactoring right uh, because that way it becomes a difficult thing to achieve or uh, you know something to get into uh, but devops is something that we should be definitely making part of it actually as part of our um, you know evaluation process for case studies um, you know we we actually focus a lot on um, also checking that how much of devops based automation is being adopted if not in the short term migration then at least in the long term uh, approach about uh, modern and optimized right so um from that perspective this should be kept in mind now to summarize um, you have these uh, tools which are available so you can go to accelerate and uh, there you will be having migration readiness assessment tool you will be having migration pattern library and uh, you will also have the migration portfolio analysis tool um, which is going to be helping you in creating the wave plan and all the mrp processes and for executing the migration all the best practices are available from migration central and um, we also have the prescriptive guidance uh, where you can um, go and check out all the um, you know uh, prescriptive solutions that we recommend to you for executing the migration all right so uh, with these set of uh, links and pointers i would be finishing of the session and um, uh, from presentation point of view so if any question answer questions are there i'm happy to answer 
otherwise uh, we are basically done so any questions there anything on the box all right all right okay so um all right then then um, you know i think i think if there is no other questions then i would uh, you know request you to all also join into the monday morning session so same like today monday morning 9 am we will have a, a session and that would focus on two tools so whosoever uh, want to have a more technology oriented discussion in terms of how the tool works and how the tools um, you know actually uh, are useful where to use which particular tool then that we will be discussing on the monday morning session and um, you know we will probably try to get you some access uh, to uh, do some self learning as well as um, you know we will do some uh, demo session also for those tools okay so with that actually i come to the end of my presentation so thank you for you know being there for last three and a half hours and um, you know i hope uh, this session has been somewhat useful to you uh, over to you avinav uh, can we then go ahead and uh, close the session and if uh, and one more thing is uh, some of you have asked if you can have the presentation uh, so after the sanity check i can uh, send that presentation across to you i believe up enough uh, you will be able to uh, have the email ids or the details of the registrants uh, to share this with them avinav you are there all right uh, so for all the attendees uh, you know we are we are at the end of the session so you can drop off if you want um i'll be keeping the session on uh, for a while because uh, you know there are some housekeeping stuff to be done here so you guys can drop off if you want and please join me on monday morning so yeah lastly just wanted to add a pradeep uh, to what you mentioned yes we will have the email id so of everyone who has uh, registered for today's session and we will be certainly sharing the content as well thank you all right thanks for the confirmation Thank <laughs> you.